Spiny Bat Chimpanzee A bizarre creature known as the Spiny Bat Chimpanzee has been reportedly seen in the Democratic Republic of the Congo. Unlike other creatures, the alleged sightings of this mysterious creature are quite recent. The creature was first reported by a member of the United States Navy who was stationed in the Democratic Republic of Congo sometime between 1997 and 2002. According to the Navy officer who wanted to remain anonymous, his unit encountered 13 strange bipedal chimpanzees. The group of chimpanzees was trying to take down other animals. They were 4 to 5 feet tall and had a grey colour. However, the most distinctive feature of these chimpanzees was the series of spines on their backs. Whenever these mysterious animals became agitated, the spines on their backs stood up like a porcupine's quills. The Navy officer also stated that his team members had a 3 minutes video of these strange animals, but that the video was never released to the public, and it remains a military secret. The officers did not tell the exact location of the sighting. However, it's believed the sighting was made somewhere near the lake of Tanganyika in the Democratic Republic of the Congo. Spiny backed chimpanzees is one of the strangest creatures ever reported. The researchers believe the jungles of Africa could potentially host hundreds of undiscovered species. The spiny backed chimpanzee could be an undiscovered species with very little population, and could very well be extinct by now. The Devil's Pool, Australia Near a little town of Babinda, Queensland, Australia is a natural pool. This is known as the Babinda Boulders. The nice surroundings of the environment is a haven for campers, hikers and photographers. But what most of them do not realise is that it's known as the Devil's Pool, as this place has a reputation associated with people passing away under mysterious circumstances. The Aboriginals dread the location as one of their legends about the pool is particularly devastating. According to the sad story, a beautiful young lady married an elder from her tribe. Not long after she got married, she met a younger man and soon fell in love. Shortly after an affair took place, she decided to run away with the young man into the woods, but her husband being an influential man sent out men to look for her and bring her back. When they found out they were surrounded, she threw herself into the devil's pool rather than live a sad life without the one she truly loved. But it does not end there. The aboriginals believe that she's still in the pool, looking for young men to lure to an early grave. Many young men have met their demise in the pool, with around 17 people drowning under mysterious circumstances since 1959, which some say gives credence to the legend. In one of the cases, a young couple stood close to the pool admiring the view, when suddenly the pool rose and swept the couple in. The woman survived but the man was never able to get out. A more recent case happened in 2010 when a young man met his demise. It was said that an invisible hand pulled him backwards when he was swimming in a calm area. Every attempt to save his life proved tough and he eventually passed away from drowning. The Disappearance of Frederick Vellantage On the 21st of October 1978, a man by the name of Frederick Vellantage disappeared under mysterious circumstances. He was flying across the Bass Strait in a Cessna aircraft while on a 230km training flight. At this point he'd already done around 150 hours of flying time which made him an amateur pilot. He was confident in this type of flight so he went ahead with the journey. On that day at around 7pm at night, the pilot radioed into the Melbourne Flight Control Centre to report an unknown aircraft. He stated that it was following him at around 4,500 feet. The service responded and told him there was no traffic close to him at the time of the report. Valantich was adamant about what he saw, saying that a sizeable unknown aircraft was closing in at high speeds, saying that it had four bright landing lights. He added that the aircraft that kept approaching him was metallic and shiny with a green light on it. Minutes later he reported that he was having problems with the engine, and when the service asked him to identify the aircraft once more he replied it wasn't an aircraft. A noise like a metallic scraping sound interrupted before the transmission was cut off. 
shortly after a sea and air search was conducted around the area he was lost in, but nothing turned up. The case was closed after the Department of Transport investigated the case, but found nothing assuming the disappearance to be fatal. Five years later, a small part of a Cessna aircraft similar in range as Volantich was found washed ashore on Finland's island. According to his father, before the disappearance, Volantich believed in UFOs, and was worried by the thought of being attacked by one. UFOlogists believe that his aircraft was either destroyed by extraterrestrials or they abducted him. Interestingly, locals close to where he went missing stated they saw bright green lights around the same time. Some, however, have put forward the idea that Volantis staged his own departure. With all the theories surrounding the disappearance of Frederick Volantis, none have been able to give a solid answer for what happened. Nikola Tesla in a car with an unidentified woman Born on the 10th of July 1856, Nikola Tesla was born into the family of an Orthodox priest as the fourth child out of five children, and lived his childhood in a village in the Austrian Empire, which is modern-day Croatia. His mother was gifted in creating mechanical household appliances, and retaining lengthy Serbian epic poems to heart, a creative and retaining gift Tesla eventually inherited. Tesla's father had originally wanted him to enter the priesthood, but promised to enroll him into the best engineering school if he recovered from an illness that had Tesla bedridden for nine months. Tesla studied at the Polytechnic Institute in Graz, Austria, where he didn't graduate because he didn't get his grades for the last semester of the third year. After working for a while at a telegraph company in Budapest, Hungary, where he was made the chief electrician, he moved to Paris where he gained a lot of experience in electrical engineering before moving to the United States in 1884 to work with world-renowned inventor and businessman Thomas Edison. After a fallout with Edison, Tesla started his own electric company. Tesla designed the alternating current electricity supply system, which has been widely used to date. Tesla also patented the Tesla coil in 1891, the year he became a citizen of the United States. The Tesla coil, which is an inductor, established the framework for wireless technologies, and is used in old radio transmissions. Tesla never married, and it was even suggested he wasn't really interested in women, as he dedicated the majority of his time to his work. However, many women hoped to get his attention. In one famous image, Tesla could be seen seated beside an unknown woman in a car. Although some believe the unidentified woman is J.P. Morgan's daughter, Anne Morgan, who also loved Tesla, there is no documentation supporting this claim. Tesla lived in New York for almost 60 years, and eventually passed away at the age of 86 on the 7th of January 1943. Before he passed away, Tesla was bankrupt and lived a secluded life. Tesla's work lives on to this day and many have said that if people listened to him during his life, this world would be a much better place. The Orang Bati The Orang Bati is a strange winged creature that's believed to live in Indonesia. The creature has been described as a bats-like flying animal. Some people have described the Orang Bati as a winged monkey. According to the local legends, Orang Bati tries to take people and carry them back to where it lives. It's believed the creature resides in the unexplored rainforest of Indonesia. The stories of Orang Bati have been around since the 15th century. One English missionary, Tyson Hughes, was quite skeptical about the Orang Bati, and said that he didn't believe the claims by the local tribes. However, a few years later, he became a believer and claimed that he had an encounter with the Orang Bati. Recent investigations have shown there is a strong possibility that the Orang Bati could actually be the large flying fox. However, the creature is not capable of carrying a human. Some researchers have claimed that it could be an entirely new species that is not previously known. However, further research and perhaps many expeditions into the jungles are required to conclusively solve the mystery of the Orang Bati. It seems that every year astronomers are discovering incredible things out in the vastness of space. 
it's become apparent that space exploration is going to be one of the top priorities for the next few centuries. Big companies are now investing big money into venturing out into space, and it could be the key into our species survival. As the technology has progressed over the years, scientists have been able to explore space in much more detail than ever before. As a result of extensive research and continued hard work over the years, many new space discoveries have been made. Some of these discoveries have completely surprised scientists. However, some researchers have said that we shouldn't be surprised by this because space is so vast. Going back on the 19th of October 2017, astronomers in the scientific world are amazed when they notice an object travelling through our solar system. The object in question had come from another solar system and it was quickly given the name of Muamua. What stood out about this object though was that it seemingly appeared out of nowhere, which in turn caused many to ask questions. When researchers were able to lock onto the object, they could see it travelling around the sun and then shooting away again. However, after this it was not to return. Astronomers were able to record data on the object for a short period of time. After looking at the data, it turned out that Oumuamua was in our solar system for over a century. The reason Oumuamua wasn't spotted until recently is because it wasn't close enough to reflect enough light for astronomers to pick it up. Even when it did get close, it was still moving very fast and meant astronomers had very little time to observe it. Once the strange object flew around the sun, it was going further away meaning it was getting fainter and fainter. The astronomers' very last observations from Hubble were on the 2nd of January 2018, and on the 3rd of May it was then seen outside of Jupiter's orbit. According to some, a Muamua was expected to reach the Cooper Belt in around 2024. Since first being seen by astronomers, it's caused much speculation as to what the object actually is. They are currently studying all the data they have to come to a conclusion about the interstellar object. The first theory that was put forward was that it was an asteroid. The scientists looked at the size of the object, which was 2,600 feet or 800 meters long, and around 260 feet or 80 meters wide. However, going back, it was reported that astronomers stated the object was not moving as it should. They picked up on the fact that Oumuamua showed a really strong non-gravitational acceleration. This tells the researchers that its motion indicated that gravity was not the only thing dictating its path. Ultimately, it will be very difficult to find out more about Oumuamua as it's no longer in the solar system. Many people have put forward their theories one of which is that this object is extraterrestrial in nature. However, recently, new research carried out by Matthew Knight of the University of Maryland Department of Astronomy suggests that Oumuamua is in fact natural. Going on to say the following, We have never seen anything like Oumuamua in our solar system. It's really a mystery still, but our preference is to stick with analogues we know, unless or until we find something unique. The alien spacecraft hypothesis is a fun idea, but our analysis suggests there is a whole host of natural phenomena that could explain it. Others are still sticking to the idea that an alien spacecraft visited our solar system, saying that even researchers said that its motion indicated that gravity was not the only thing dictating its path. As of right now, a Muamua remains a mystery. Recently though, it's been announced that a second interstellar object has been captured by astronomers. It's been called Comet C 2019-Q4. It's also named after the astronomer that discovered it, a man named Gennady Borisov. After other researchers were able to see the object, they noticed it was on a hyperbolic orbit. This is something that suggests it wants to get away from our solar system and therefore means it had to enter our solar system at one point in time. As you can imagine, many people have asked why these interstellar objects have been entering our solar system. Why is this happening now? Or has this been happening for decades? And it's only been in the last few years that we've been able to pick up on them. Astronomers working at the Gemini Observatory in Hawaii were able to capture real images of this object. There's been a lot of speculation as to what this object is. 
going back to when Oumuamua was first discovered, researchers suggested that it was a comet. However, this wasn't the case. As of today though, Oumuamua's planetary system of origin, the amount of time it's been floating around in space, and where it's heading to are completely unknown. As of right now though, Comet C 2019Q4 doesn't have much mystery about it. This is when compared to Oumuamua. Researchers know this object is a comet, and this is because of the bright comet and tail it's giving off. As of right now, the comet is close to our sun but will soon be heading deep into space. Researchers have said that right now is a fascinating time for space. As our technology improves, we are discovering more and more objects. It's important that astronomers conduct further research on these objects when they're first picked up on. Detecting a celestial object early on is essential to understand what its behaviour is like. For example, back in 2018, we saw more than 91 near-miss hits of different asteroids of all sizes passing by our fragile blue planet. The scary thing is that out of 91 asteroids that passed by us, only 30 of these asteroids were seen coming prior to their passing, and only two of those were discovered one year ahead of the near-miss event. This means that for more than 89 of the asteroids near striking the Earth in 2018, only two of them could have been prevented with our current technology, showcasing just how threatening these large celestial bodies can be. Recently an asteroid by the name of 2019 OK made headlines around the world. This wasn't because of its size but rather because of its sudden appearance in our sky. We had no idea it was close to our planet until the day it passed by us. Again, this just shows how fragile we really are. Our best scientists and researchers had no idea this object was flying past us until the last minute, and at that point it could have been too late. This object is estimated to be 57 to 130 meters in diameter, or 187 to 426 feet. Interestingly, it's the closest an asteroid has come to planet Earth in 2019. It came within 62,000 miles or 100,000 kilometers of Earth. And although this doesn't sound close, when we're talking about distances in space, this is actually pretty close. Another object was first observed back on the 13th of December in 2012. The asteroid known as 2012 XO 134 quickly passed by us on the 18th of April of this year. But astronomers have said that it will most likely make a return trip in the coming years and this could see it colliding with our planet with ease. Fortunately for us, the size of the asteroid is only roughly 90 meters in length, and when calculating the velocity and angle of entry along with the general makeup of the rock, the asteroid should more than safely break up in the atmosphere before getting anywhere close to the ground. Despite this good news, NASA appears to be keeping a close eye on the asteroid as it's been catalogued more than 91 times since its first discovery back in 2012. Another event that's coming up is that of the Orionids meteor cluster. This will be visible through the month of October. The peak for these showers will last from the 21st of October to the 22nd of October, and will feature apparent objects known as 1P Halley. This will pass our planet at a velocity of 41 miles per second. Although this parent object will be far from our planet and is no way going to strike our planet for several millennia, it will have numerous smaller bodies to make up the peak of the shower during the month of October. Those that have the necessary equipment to view the object can track its trajectory using online resources to help them map out the ideal locations to view the comet. It's reported as being more than 8 miles in diameter making it one of the largest asteroids discussed in this video. Another object NASA have picked up on is that of the Comet Swift. Known as a comet with an orbital period of roughly 133 years, the Comet Swift will be passing by us with an incredible proximity to our planet with a size that's more than 8 miles in radius. This comet is absolutely massive, and if it's on a collision course for Earth it could cause a massive amount of damage unprecedented by past strikes during human history. Luckily for us, this comet makes the near-miss list, and won't be on a collision course for Earth for possibly hundreds of thousands of years to come. Until then, it will be the source of a wide number of meteor showers as it's broken up into pieces. 
As of today though, astronomers and researchers are keeping a close eye on these celestial objects, and are giving updates when they can. National parks are some of the most beautiful places on the planet. They offer incredible views and are home to hundreds of species of animals. Every year people travel to national parks in order to see their beauty. Efforts will be made by the government to preserve these spots in the hopes of allowing the public at large to enjoy its unaging beauty for centuries to come. However, people have picked up on the fact that these locations are not as perfect as people make out. When you scratch under the surface of these locations, you will soon start to notice a worrying trend. This is in the form of disappearances and mysterious creature encounters. It's even been said that some of these cases have been covered up in order to stop mass panic. Although this may sound dramatic, it's tough to understand why so many people go missing. In fact, there seems to be an unreasonable amount of disappearances that occur in national parks from around the world. An almost disproportionate amount given any other errors compared to regarding visiting populations of any kind. Of course, skeptics may argue that this would make sense for there to be so many disappearances given the fact that national parks are massive. They also point out that untrained individuals can easily get lost in their massive signs. This would be a fine answer, but it doesn't apply to all those that go missing. In fact, many people that go missing are experts and people that know these regions very well. Many people walk into a national park and are never seen or heard from again. As mentioned, many of these do have experience. Some of these individuals even lay out plans of travel, back up phones in case of emergency, telling family members and friends where their trail will be covering and so on. When they're eventually reported as missing though nothing can be found, it's almost as if they disappeared from the planet. Other people have been reported as missing only then to turn up weeks or months later. When the individual is eventually interviewed and asked what happened, they have no idea. In fact, some people can't even remember the last few years of their life. It's one of the reasons why people are so interested in these cases. It begs the question as to what's really happening to these people. The number of people thought to go missing in national parks is said to be in the thousands. Sadly, although many of these people never return, some have and their stories have left us with even more questions than answers. It's fair to say that national parks are not the safest places. There are many places where someone could get lost. Whether that be going the wrong way and straying off a path, or getting injured and not being able to walk. What some people have also picked up on is the fact that the National Park Service has no database on missing people. The fact these people go missing in their parks, you would think they would have some kind of tracking system. But because of this, no one really knows how many people are currently missing in national parks. There's also the sheer volume of missing person cases that would qualify as especially strange. One example is that of Stephen Kibaki. In February 1978, Stephen decided to go exploring in the Great Lakes Triangle. However, while in this region, he suddenly vanished. What's strange is that this location is known for its disappearances. Not only this, but over the years, people have reported encountering mysterious creatures. Stephen had told some people that he was going skiing. This turned out to be true because when investigations were carried out, his skis were found close to Lake Michigan. Investigations concluded he was missing and it would be 15 months before any news was released about where Stephen was. This news, however, came about in one of the weirdest ways. After being missing for over a year, he turned up on his father's doorstep. After opening the door, Stephen said he couldn't remember anything that had happened for the last 15 months. The only thing he said was that after waking up, he realized he was over 700 miles away wearing nothing. Stephen said that he didn't know he was gone for that long, and didn't understand how he couldn't remember anything. He was considered a sane man and holds a PhD in clinical psychology. To this day, this case remains a mystery. If these people who've gone missing were in excellent physical and mental condition, 
while also possessing incredible hiking skills, and were essentially regarded as individuals of whom knew exactly what they were doing when they went missing, and there was still no trace of them to be found, then we need to consider the idea that perhaps there is something other than the decisions of these hikers that are evolved. So we should first ask ourselves, is there something that's being hidden in national parks? Could it be that national parks are formed to hide something that has been found? To preserve wildlife or creatures that otherwise need to remain hidden? So the next question is, why would such zones be protected by the federal government? An interesting statistic from this era comes from the commonly reported sightings of strange creatures in national parks. In many of these national parks, many people have reported supernatural sightings of spirits and mysterious orbs of light. All throughout North and South America, national parks are hotspots for unidentified flying objects and creatures that seem to resemble giant humanoids. Further evidence can be found when analyzing a surprising number of cases found at the Green Mountain National Park. In fact, many locals have suggested the area is a hotspot for supernatural and paranormal encounters, saying that many of the disappearances appear to happen in a small area, and this area is referred to as the Bennington Triangle. The area was provided the name by the locals after an unreasonable amount of disappearances began to happen during 1945 to 1950. Of course, many of these hikers had experience in the region, some of these disappearances also seem to occur while the person was still within 50 yards of their group, but still happened to vanish without a trace. One of the things that people encounter while exploring national parks is mysterious sounds. Many have come forward and said that while hiking it feels as if low and high pitched sounds are following them. Some believe there could be creatures lurking in our national parks that are causing these disappearances. Over the years, experts have come forward and said that they've encountered large humanoid creatures while out in these open areas. Of course, these claims are immediately met with criticism. However, these people stand by what they see. One hunter claimed that while camping in a national park, he heard some strange grunting noises. When pointing a flashlight to where the noises were coming from, he saw a large Bigfoot-like creature, and he said that it was over eight feet tall. One thing he noted though is how built the creature was, saying that if it wanted to, it could have easily overpowered him. But he said that although the creature was of such a large build, it didn't seem vicious in any way. These creatures usually follow a theme. They stand on two legs and are roughly seven to 12 feet tall. They have the general appearance of that of a large ape-like creature. Sightings of this beast have persisted for eons since the time of the Aborigines and their ancient mythological folklore. What's all the more startling about these claims is that even in the modern day people are encountering these creatures. All over the globe there have been reports of them, from Tibet, America and even Australia. There's no shortage of these stories. Ancient myths credit these creatures as having run-ins with humans and when this happens, it doesn't usually end well. Some have even managed to record some of these mysterious calls, and when given to scientists, they said that humans are unable to make these kinds of noises. Going back, old tales said that in Australia, the Yowie were the original inhabitants of the Australian continent, but were completely driven out of their native lands by men that came there to settle. Whatever you believe, there's no denying that something is going on and that people all over the world are encountering something. Oddly enough, these mysterious creatures are not anything new. In fact, for hundreds of years, large humanoids have been encountered in national parks around the world, with legends detailing that these ancient giants tried to avoid men at all costs. Every so often, however, people do encounter these creatures, and what's interesting is that all of the eyewitness accounts seem to follow a similar theme. Something else that's encountered in these regions is mysterious flashing lights. These unidentified flying objects are often described as looking like pulsating balls of lights. Some who've been hiking in national parks have said that they give off a range of different colors, with the most commonly seen colors being that of red, orange, blue, white, and purple. What's interesting is some have put forward darker theories about what these lights are, 
with some eyewitnesses saying they felt as if these lights were trying to get them to wander off their trail. Another object that's commonly seen in this area is that of the Triangle UFO. These crafts are said to be made up of three lines, with others saying the object is actually a large dark triangular craft, and they're able to hover motionless without making any noise. It can normally be seen when a mysterious creature has been reported, leading some to believe that perhaps the two are linked in some way. Today, these lights are still being witnessed by thousands of people across the globe, and it seems we're no closer to understanding where they're coming from. In recent years, archaeologists have made some fascinating discoveries. These finds have helped researchers understand what life would have been like thousands of years ago. Sometimes these discoveries have left researchers baffled, whereas some have helped us to answer some of our history's greatest mysteries. All around the world there appears to be a number of strange ancient artifacts that have surfaced, and this has led many researchers to question what the ancient past had in store for humanity. One place where many discoveries have been made is that of Central America. Perhaps one of the greatest civilizations to have ever existed is that of the Maya. The Maya people are perhaps best known for their sophisticated writing. Over the years, researchers have been able to map out certain areas where this civilization lived, and it turns out they were well distributed through northern Mexico and Central America. The Maya civilization were known for being one of the most sophisticated and highly developed cultures of pre-Columbian Americans. They were also known for their astronomical knowledge, art, agriculture, and mathematics. The Maya Empire was a strong one and had lasting foundations that would see them fit for many years. However, during the 16th century, researchers noticed they seemingly vanished. Since first discovering this, many questions have been put forward, and up until now it's been archaeologists and researchers who've been trying to unravel these mysteries. Researchers last year were searching for a lost well underneath the ancient Yucatan Peninsula, and accidentally made an incredible discovery. Turns out they stumbled across 150 ritual objects. The scientists said they would have been one of the first ones to view these in thousands of years, and these ancient cave systems could tell us why the ancient Maya civilization fell. The discovery of the cave system was by pure luck, as going back all records of the cave seemed to have vanished. One of the researchers said the following about the discovery, I couldn't speak and I started to cry. I have analysed human remains but nothing compares to the sensation I had entering alone for the first time in that cave. What's incredible is this cave has been untouched for thousands of years, and since its discovery only a few have ventured inside. However, actually reaching this cave isn't easy. For the archaeologist to get inside the cave they must crawl through other cave systems. Researchers working on the site said it's extremely uncomfortable and in some places it even gets dangerous. After crawling on their stomachs, the archaeologists were able to reach this incredible site, which was home to many different ancient artifacts. It's perhaps one of the biggest discoveries in regards to the Maya, and researchers are hoping it will help us to better understand this mysterious civilization. This isn't the only Maya discovery that's recently been made. Going back, researchers are trekking through the Guatemala jungle, and stumbled across something they didn't expect to find. It's known to be an extremely hard place to explore and the researchers at the time did experience some difficulty navigating their way through the dense jungles. After struggling due to the dense vegetation, the team tried to come up with a different way of allowing them to see what was inside the jungle. It was then that one of the researchers came up with a great idea to map out the whole terrain of the jungle. Thanks to the technology that we call light detection LIDAR. As the researchers were doing this, they noticed that something massive was lying beneath the jungle. The interesting discovery includes over 61,000 mare structures, all laying beneath the dense jungle canopy of Guatemala. Large pyramids, houses, single houses, palaces, and even ceremonial centers were discovered. This incredible find may reveal many clues about the farming practices politics, economy, and infrastructures of the ancient Maya civilization. The whole region spans more than 2,100 square kilometers. 
This LiDAR technology allowed the researchers to see through this thick jungle canopy and maps areas where we normally couldn't see. This means that we're now able to see human-made objects and structures on the ground. Apparently the researchers believe there were up to 11 million people who lived on the Maya lands. Knowing this, the researchers can start to piece together the massive agricultural effort that was required to sustain such a large population. It would take a while for researchers to study each individual object, and they want to take their time as they say that each object tells a different story. As of right now, the researchers are just happy they made the discovery. These aren't the only interesting discoveries that have recently been made. Over the years, archaeologists have been able to peel back our history, and each discovery that has been made has allowed us to understand our past a little better. Some of these come in the form of ancient signs. However, although some of these are incredible, some still remain a mystery. Our ancestors would engage in bizarre rituals that even to this day we struggle to explain. It's hard to believe that some of the structures that we've discovered were built by our early ancestors, but studies have shown us that we don't give them the credit they deserve. Recently, a team of archaeologists made an interesting discovery inside an ancient Chinese tomb. This came in the form of some old skulls. This didn't seem out of the ordinary, but they soon realised that these ancient people were intentionally reshaping their skulls. This is a theme that's been found all over the world, but in this case it's thought they did this to show off their status and wealth. During the excavation, the scientists and researchers were able to find over 20 skeletons showing deformed craniums. Further research showed the team the remains dated from 4,800 to 12,500 years ago. What's interesting about this is researchers thought skull modification only dated back to around 9,000 years ago, with cultures such as the Mayans and Aboriginal people being the first to do so. The research team from Dallas, Texas said the skulls that were found belonged to adults, of which four of them were men and one a woman. Close by were artifacts which told the team they would have been wealthy when they was alive. One of the researchers said the following, it's too early to tell whether intentional cranial modification first emerged in East Asia and spread elsewhere or originated independently in different places. Another place where these skulls have been discovered is in southern Mexico. Recently, an underwater group of archaeologists were exploring a flooded sinkhole in southern Mexico. This location was shrouded in mystery and the locals didn't want to go near it in fear of something bad happening. The archaeologists managed to find a cavern filled with human bones and elongated skulls. The cavern is a natural pit that was once used by the ancient Maya for various offerings. One legend believed by the locals was that the mysterious cavern is guarded by a horse-headed serpent. Many of the older residents tell stories of people noticing the serpent leaping up, spinning around the trees and then diving back into the water. Another ancient civilization that's fascinated researchers is that of the Aztecs. One of the most impressive and powerful empires to come out of all of South America was the Empire of the Aztecs. This saw the ancient civilization become an almost overwhelming presence throughout the entire region. The Aztecs formed the central hub for their city in what is now modern-day Mexico City, and has been the topic of a wide variety of archaeological discussions. It appears the early tribal civilization had produced a wide variety of technological breakthroughs for their time, including a complex and detailed calendar with an accurate map of the constellations, as well as specialized crafts and ceramics, featherworks and early developments of a written language and higher education. Interestingly, even though a tremendous amount of information regarding the old civilization is recorded deep throughout the mythologies and historical records, not much is known in the modern day about where the tribe originally came from or what changes they'd undergone compared to neighboring tribes. It became obvious to the first settlers that the Aztec tribes had a strange culture and religion. This focused around an almost apocalyptic scenario and would often engage in strange sacrifices to appease their gods. This was in fear of what would soon become of them if they did not perform these sacrifices. It became obvious that wherever these original rituals came from, it did not completely originate solely from the Aztec Empire, and references and mythology spoke of a land from which the tribes came from. 
the land was known as the Lost Land of Aslan, which was said to have been the home of seven different tribes that arose from the city known as the Place of Seven Caves. Each of these underground caves held the different people in a safe and secluded location until they emerged into the world, and became separate tribes and empire on their own, which seemed to be eerily similar to the function of an underground bunker of some kind. Due to the mythologies ranging from each tribe regarding the origin of the land and where it could be located, no one has been lucky enough to find it, and this wild goose chase has led many to believe that perhaps it's nothing more than a religious origin story, with no basis in historical fact. Until more can be discovered and additional translations of the mythologies can be found, it appears these cities and lands will be locked away impossible to find underground. For many years, people from around the world have been fascinated by the sightings of a large ape-like creature. This giant ape is often referred to as Bigfoot or Sasquatch. This creature is known for its size and being commonly seen throughout the United States. Those who have allegedly seen the creature have reported that it's able to reach sizes of around 10 to 15 feet tall. Though many might not believe the creature exists, there is a surprising amount of evidence that could point to this creature's existence. There are many areas stretching across North America that are often referred to as hotspots for sightings of Bigfoot. According to many Bigfoot experts, these concentrated areas get the highest amount of reports of a Sasquatch creature. According to thousands of witnesses, they have encountered massive, hairy, ape-like humanoids all throughout North America. Though the accounts vary widely, there's no shortage of strange Bigfoot claims. Many of the eyewitnesses state that not only have they seen these creatures, but they have also heard them, saying they give out low grunt noises and can be heard hitting trees. This has become known as tree knocking and Bigfoot researchers have said they do this to communicate with one another. In fact, over the years some people have managed to record these creatures making low vocalizations. This one recording was submitted by a woman named Lisa. She said the following, while camping out in Washington, me and my husband started to hear some strange noises. It was around 1am and we both couldn't figure out where the noises were coming from. At first, I suggested it was just the local wildlife, but he wasn't one over. He told me to record it and upon hearing it back, it's kind of eerie. He goes out into the forest more than me and he said that he's never heard anything like this before. After sharing the video around, it was suggested we may have captured a Bigfoot. I'm not sure about this, but others seem to think no other animal sounds like this. So what do you guys make of this recording, and do you think it could be that of a big friend? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. The Grassman is another Bigfoot-like creature that is said to inhabit the woods of Indiana and West Virginia. 
the Grassman is a massively large and hairy man-like creature. Unlike many of the other Bigfoot sightings all across the world, it appears that the Grassman is far more hostile than Bigfoot. Many have claimed to have stumbled across the beast while hiking through the forest, and have said the Grassman is capable of constructing small huts and areas for living, a unique behaviour that's never been reported surrounding that of the Bigfoot species. The first reported sightings of the Grassman monster goes back to 1978. This was when several kids ran into their home and alerted their grandparents that a hairy man was digging through their trash bin. When the grandparents went out to investigate, they saw a large hairy man digging through trash looking for food. However, it quickly ran away after being spotted by the adults. As research continued in the area surrounding that of the Grassman, people began to report spotting a large ape-like creature living in huts made of tall grass, only to come back to the site later to find it completely abandoned, with the creature moving on to new areas after being spotted. One theory that's been put forward by some is that what people are actually seeing is a surviving group of apes known as Gigantopithecus. Gigantopithecus was the largest ape that ever walked our planet. Scientists who have studied this giant beast think that it weighed up to half a ton. Researchers have been frustrated though as they haven't been able to find much information about this creature. Excavations only revealed a few fossilized teeth and jaws. Paleontologists have long wondered how this giant ape moved around. Given its massive size, it would have needed an extremely muscular body, along with a strong frame. However, after reconstructions, researchers put forward the idea that Gigantopithecus put a lot of weight on his arms. However, there are those that think it could have been bipedal. Another mystery surrounding this creature is when did it live? It's thought that the biggest populations would have lived around 2 million years ago, with the last of their kind going extinct around 200,000 years ago. As large as this creature was, it was a herbivore. Researchers who have studied the teeth have said that their diet would have consisted of fruits, nuts and bamboo. What's incredible is how strong these giants would have been. It's been estimated an average gorilla is approximately 4 to 9 times stronger than an average human. Gorillas have been seen in the wild tearing down thick trees with hardly any effort. Researchers have suggested that going by its current estimated signs, Gigantopithecus could have been anywhere from 12 to 30 times stronger than a human, with some researchers saying it could have been 50 times stronger than a modern human. It's common knowledge this creature has long been extinct, but there are those that think it could still be living in remote parts of the world. The Yeti is a giant ape-like creature believed to be found in the Himalayas. Yetis, according to modern day sightings, are said to stand from 8 to 11 feet tall, have a coat of brown, reddish or black hair and said to resemble a huge upright walking ape. For the last few hundred years, individuals have come forward and reported sightings of large humanoids in the Himalayas. One local in Tibet said the following about their encounter. Living in the mountains, we see and are told stories about things that many wouldn't believe. Most of us have lived here our entire lives, and it's allowed us to have a much more open approach than people that just visit. We have come accustomed to these conditions and what the mountains offer. We know the paths to take and what lies in the mountains. I know every creature here big and small, and my recent encounter was unlike anything I'd seen before. There has always been talks of great men that live in the mountains. These stories have been passed down by our parents and friends. Our ancestors talked a lot about these creatures and it's common knowledge that we share the mountains with them. Some of my friends have said they've seen them, but said that it didn't get close. They keep their distance from us and live within the mountainous regions. My friends have said to me they don't harm humans but they're also not fond of us. On one particular occasion, I decided to head out for a walk. After trekking for hours, I reached a slope and could see something in the distance. At first, I thought it was someone who lived nearby, but as I walked closer, I was able to get a better look. I could tell that whatever this thing was, it was tall. If I had to guess, I would say this creature was around 8 feet in height. 
It also had a deep brown reddish fur that surprisingly blended into the snowy background. At this point in time, I would say the creature was around 60 feet from where I was standing. Although I was aware of the creatures, I never thought I'd see one. After observing it for several minutes, it suddenly turned its head towards me. At this point, I started to get nervous as this thing was much taller than me. However, after staring at me for what seemed like several minutes, the creature soon went on its way. It's an experience that I'll never forget. What's interesting is that in all of the Yeti encounters, the creature is never reported as coming to the humans. Another said to be credible encounter is that of Eric Shipton. Back in 1951, a group of hikers were already making headlines for their attempt to scale Mount Everest, and the endless amount of training they had taken to see their journey to the end. The group came well prepared, with the equipment and mental fortitude necessary for their expedition to be seen as a success. Most importantly though, in order to prove they did climb the mountain, they brought along a state-of-the-art camera. This was to take high-quality photographs once they reached the mountain peak. Incredibly, the headlines that ran all across the country after the group had finished their ascent was not that of their incredible trek to the top of the world's tallest mountain, but rather of that of their incredibly high-quality images they snapped what appears to be an anatomically correct footprint of a strange humanoid-like creature, which appeared to be living at an incredibly high altitude in the region. The footprints were originally found by Michael Ward, and were later pointed out to fellow members of the hiking group. Eric Shipton quickly took high-quality photographs of the prints, while placing down his ice pick next to it. This was to help show the length and width of the incredible find. Many skeptics had argued the authenticity of the footprints, but research analysis have found anatomically correct details so perfect it would have been impossible to fake. The footprint showed the big toe of the creature appeared to be the perfect size and volume one would see in a creature of a massive size. This would also allow for adequate balance, and the depth of certain areas of the footprint showed a detailed distribution of weight that the hikers would have never been able to accurately reproduce. Today the photograph is seen as one of the most compelling pieces of evidence of the Yeti creature, and has even helped to shed light into its weight, size and evolution. Skeptics however have said the Yeti and Bigfoot can easily be explained. Although there is a large amount of photos, videos and even audio recordings, they say that what people are seeing is hoaxes or even misidentified wildlife. For example, they say that most of the photos that have been taken of Bigfoot are actually showing normal animals. One skeptic said that a photograph he analysed turned out to be a bear. One skeptic said there are too many hoaxes out there, and most of the time their alleged findings turn out to be nothing more than moulded materials or gorilla suits. One of the issues is there are many hoaxes out there that are doing damage to those that are genuinely interested in these creatures. There have been many high profile hoaxes that have unfortunately made it into the mainstream media. All this does is give people a negative view on the creature, and the people who are interested in searching for it. Over the past few years, I've tried to bring attention to anomalous creatures, items and occurrences that have been happening all around the world. As information surrounding these strange phenomena have continued to grow, impossible to predict parallels have begun to surface, begging for a much deeper interpretation of reports and how they all connect. This has led to a new idea I've been working on on this channel, and it's going to be known as the ACIO Reports. These reports will feature an ACIO, an abbreviation of the term Anomalous Creatures, Items and Occurrences. These will include those that have captured the attention of our researchers of whom believe they can track, understand and research the theoretical makeup of such anomalous entities. Not only could this help to establish serious research efforts in fields otherwise completely ignored, but it would also help to propel the mystery of such entities into the forefront of natural science growing our understanding of the world around us. So many times in the past have incredible characters claimed impossible creature sightings and other fantastic phenomena, facing the blunt criticisms of people claiming their information was far from factual, only to be proven legitimate later down the line, with none of the credit. 
An example of such a report was made surrounding an elusive creature known as the African Unicorn, of which would later become a proven species now known as the Akabi, that many researchers have denied the existence to within the Congo. Another example is the existence of the Ether, proved by Nikola Tesla with his advancements in radio wave technology, only to have the name be recognised as the Electromagnetic Spectrum despite Nikola Tesla naming it the Ether, for its ether properties and ancient magic references, an effort made to delegitimise his claims of mysticism. So today our first ACIO report will centre around Organism 46b. Before information surrounding Organism 46b can be discussed, the environmental context to the investigation must be thoroughly identified. Reports of Organism 46b area of habitation rest within that of Lake Vostok, located more than 700 feet beneath the glacial surface of the ice at its shallowest region, and roughly 2,600 feet at its deepest region. It's at this depth that the ice from the Antarctic glaciers are under enough pressure to melt and form deep lakes. It's within one of these deep lakes known as Lake Vostok that the creature known as Organism 46b resides in. A supposedly leaked document surrounding the first attempts made by Russian researchers back on the 5th of February in 2012, while drilling to the lake's surface made reference to the creature known as Organism 46b. The report itself was titled Organism 46b, and detailed an incredibly bizarre story in which Russian researchers claimed to have encountered a massive colossal squid, and that this creature resided in the lake and could release toxins into the water could squeeze itself down into small sizes, take on weird shapes, change its physical colours and could cause a mild form of hypnotism. This was if a person began to stare at the creature for too long. Here are quotes from the supposed letter written by a man named Dr. Anton Badolka. We encountered organism 46b on our first day. It disabled our radio which we later learned to our alarm was intentional. It's also able to paralyse prey from a distance of up to 150 feet by releasing its venom into the water. Tragically, my colleague and lifelong friend was killed this way. He tread water wearing a blissful smile as the organism approached him. We watched helplessly as it used its arms to tear off its head then pops its remains into its mouth. It was as if it hypnotised him telepathically. It shaped itself into the form of a human diver. We thought it was one of our colleagues swimming towards us in scuba gear. By the time the closest scientist had realised what it was, it grabbed him and tore him to bits. Some variations of the legend claim that one of the tentacles of the creature had been chopped off, but that the severed tentacle later reanimated and strangled another member of the team. The legend ends claiming there are a few surviving members of the expedition and that Russian officials captured the creature and tried to cover it up. Fact checking the story leads to a number of strange dead ends that come about in eras of documented factual events that otherwise should have been explored. Below is the complete timeline of the factual events of the Lake Vostok drilling expedition. Back in January of 2011, Russian scientists published a paper titled Vostok Subglacial Lake, details of Russian plans activities for drilling and sampling. One of the scientists, Valery Lurkin, worked at the Russian Antarctic Expedition, Arctic and Antarctic Research Institute at St. Petersburg. The document detailed the first and only public plan for a Russian expedition into Lake Vostok. Below is a portion from the introduction of the paper surrounding the expedition. The Russian Federation has developed a national project involving the drilling and sampling of Vostok's subglacial lake East Antarctica. The objective is to explore this extreme icy environment, using a variety of techniques to identify the forms and level of life that exist there. The project is funded by the Russian Federal Service Roshi Dromed. During the time of the published paper, the Russian Federation had yet to receive support from other nations of the world, as their borehole efforts were actively going against the Antarctic Treaty with the United Kingdom and the United States petitioning the Russian Federation against borehole techniques due to environmental impact of the sealed lake. Their opposition was due in part to the drilling techniques used by the Russian scientists, 
of which included the massive use of ferron and kerosene. This was to act as a lubricant for the drilling equipment, of which would immediately drain into the lake at the point of connection. Despite the Antarctic Treaty violation the Russian Federation continued with their efforts. Within the published paper titled Vostok's Subglacial Lake Details of Russian Plans Activities for Drilling and Sampling, the scientists detailed a new piece of technology that would allow the borehole to use a transportation module that could be sent down into the borehole via new mechanisms and enter into the lake. The diagram for the technology claims that the module device in the borehole would only be 123mm in diameter and impossible to send a diver into. However, given the secrecy of the project and the design used, such a technology could have been sealed up to send a research team into the borehole if made slightly larger. The technology also shows evidence of human-sized transportation modules. Given that the module designs had a height and width that would scale to fit a human body in a cylindrical tube of a height three times the tube's width. By October 2011, Valerie Luckin, the co-author of the published paper, was at the Antarctic Research Station. The expedition continued for several weeks up until the end of December, before issues first arose amongst the expedition. The reasons for why Valerie Lurkin first started his expedition in October of 2011 was due to October being the summer months for the Antarctic continent, keeping the location at its warmest for the expedition. These summer months only lasted from the beginning of October to February. However, after the 6th of February, the expedition must have been called off due to temperatures plummeting below 40 degrees Celsius. On the 28th of December, the Russian team claimed they had less than 5 metres left to drill before striking into the lake, and were confident they were to meet their goal before the end of the Antarctic summer months. It was shortly after this transmission, however, that the team would undergo a 6-day radio silence, and this was for reasons not entirely understood. The encounter with the organism 46B led to the reported deaths of several top-secret Russian researchers, and so many believe this is why the document could have been leaked as a warning to other researchers in the area. Despite the far-fetched abilities of organism 46B, reports appear to match a number of known cases of squid and octopus entities in the real world. In fact, every single ability mentioned by the letters the organism 46B might possess appear to match many of the abilities found in deep-sea species of cephalopods, and environments that would be similar to in light pressure and water quality to organism 46B. Below is a detailed writing surrounding the theoretical ability of telepathic traits within organism 46B, and how the ability could be scientifically explained. Understanding the creature's ability to perform telepathic ability is both difficult and nearly impossible, as the mechanisms for telepathy are still not entirely understood in the modern day. However, assumptions and data information surrounding numerous marine animals can be made as to what might be responsible for telepathic abilities in organism 46b. It's important to note there is evidence in scientific endeavours in the realm of neuroscience, and the ability to translate the neurons near random electrical pulses throwings into readable information that can be displayed or understood. In fact, back in 1999, there was a research study by Dan Yang at the University of Berkeley, California that successfully recreated what a cat observes in the physical world. This was done using pure data retrieved from visual neurons. The implications of this finding means that if someone could create a technology so sensitive and accurate in picking up electromagnetic fields, or electrical stimuli one could remotely detect these occurrences coming from the human brain, and work to gather the data required to translate your thoughts and brain signals into readable information. If we take this theory of data retrieval from the brains of animals via sensing electrical impulses and changes in the electromagnetic field, then there is evidence of evolution granting this ability amongst life here on Earth. Given the fact that the organism 46b is expected to live its entire life in a completely dark underwater environment, it's possible that the species could have evolved a complex form of electroreception for its survival. Squids are one of the very few species in the world that can camouflage, and change the pigments of their skin so rapidly they can make a variety of colours. Additionally, the glass squid species is capable of using bioluminescence in a deep-sea environment. 
They assist to stun fish and seemingly hypnotize them to be consumed. Given the depth and lack of lights deep within the underground Lake Vostok, it's of a high probability that if large marine animals were to exist within the trapped lake, they would also possess evolutionary abilities to generate bioluminescence. Bioluminescence tied with a squid's ability to alter the color of the pigments of their skin could create seizure-inducing colors and shapes that could temporarily cause an individual to become hypnotized or undergo a seizure if looking directly at the creature. This could explain the hypnotic effects as reported in the leaked documents surrounding the creature. Given the lack of bones or large deposits of cartilage within an octopus, the species is capable of squeezing through small openings and shrinking their body down to impossible sizes. In fact, a 600 pound octopus is capable of pushing through its entire body through a hole the size of a coin. As long as an opening is large enough to allow the creature to fit its beak through, it will travel through the opening with relative ease. It's for this reason that the claim of a shape-shifting abilities of organism 46b are realistic to the species. Additionally, a borehole the size of 123 millimeters would have been more than enough of a size to fit its body through if it was to make an attempt to reach the surface of the glacier. If the claims surrounding organism 46b are to be believed, the creature has the following abilities that have allowed it to take down individuals with an incredibly short span of time. Shapeshifting, hypnosis, camouflage, colossal size, ability to shrink, telepathy and large quantities of toxin. Given its danger and efforts needed to be contained by the Russian Federation as claimed by the leaked document, this could very well mean that organism 46b is one of the most dangerous creatures naturally living on planet Earth. Its ability to be weaponized for future efforts also seems to be a very real possibility given the claims of the leaked document and other rumors that have surfaced surrounding the creature. For these reasons, organism 46b has been given a red status. Referred to by theorists as the alien abduction movement, back during the years of the 1960s to the 1980s, alien abduction reports began to skyrocket as they seemed to be a narrative of both mainstream reports and popular alien encounters far more personal than the average UFO sightings of the years before. This has led many to wrongly assume that the sudden bursts of alien abduction reports were nothing more than attempts by desperate people to capture their 15 minutes of fame when realistically these reports were far more legitimate than the major news sources were making them out to be. So today we'll be taking a step back to look at one of the first alien abduction encounters to have ever been reported, several years before the alien abduction movement and uncover the secret it has to offer. Working as a farmer back in October of 1957, Antonio Villas Boas would go on to be one of the first reported alien abduction encounters with not only the overwhelming evidence to prove his claims, but also as one of the main reports that helped to develop further evidence for that of the alien hybrid theory. According to his abduction report, on the night of October the 15th, 1957, Antonio and his brother were working out in their fields when they began to notice a bright red light in the night sky. Originally, they believed the light to have been a form of aircraft, but then, as time went on, they assumed that given its stationary position in the sky, it was more likely a star they never noticed before. They would finish a portion of the field that night with no further incident. On the night of October the 16th, 1957, Antonio was working in his fields without the help of his brother well after the sun had set. This was to avoid the scorching temperatures of the daytime. He was well equipped to work throughout the night, as he had done many times before, sitting on his tractor and ploughing the fields for the next few hours. Oddly enough, as Antonio was working, he then claimed to see the same bright red star he had witnessed on the previous night out in the distance. Although the bright red star was an anomaly, he wasn't too worried by it as he and his brother had seen the red light the previous night, to which it seemingly displayed no strange patterns other than having moved a few times before. Unfortunately, however, Antonio was alone this night, 
without the aid of his brother and so the situation will not be the same as the previous day. He continued his work unsure of what he was seeing, keeping an eye on the strange red star seemingly unmoving across the sky, but appearing brighter and closer than the previous night. A few more moments passed before he began to notice that the red star was growing in size. Worried it could be a number of things, he quickly stopped working and looked over at the bright red light, trying to figure out what it could have been. He then began to realise that the bright red star wasn't growing in size, but that rather it was definitely some form of aircraft quickly approaching his position. It was not long before he could make out the shape of the craft, a roughly circular or egg-shaped aerial craft with a bright red light at the front, and a strange rotating tower protruding from the top, as the entire aircraft seemingly hovered without any visible mechanisms or propulsion. As the aircraft began to descend near the location of Antonio, it began to protrude three extended legs to support the craft as it landed in the nearby fields. After seeing the craft descend, Antonio put his tractor into gear and tried to leave the area as fast as he could. After only a few seconds however, his tractor completely died, as all the lights in the tractor shut off and the engine suddenly stopped believing the strange aircraft to have been responsible for the sudden shut-off. Antonio quickly jumped from the tractor and began running on foot through the fields, away from the landed craft. As Antonio was running, falling in and out of the soft, recently ploughed field, he was quickly captured by a small, five-foot-tall humanoid creature, wearing grey overalls and a helmet. Though it's not specified whether or not the creature's helmet was that of a completely airtight system, or merely a protective gear worn on the head, Antonio does not specify that he was able to see the entirety of the humanoid's face that grabbed him. He only states that he noticed its eyes that were small and blue, and that as it spoke it made noises similar to that of a bark or a yelping sound. Shortly after the first humanoid seized Antonio, Three more humanoids of similar description joined in and grabbed him, rapidly dragging him inside the aircraft as he fought to try and get away. Once dragged inside, the humanoid creatures then began to take Antonio's clothes off, as they began to cover him from head to toe in a gelatinous compound. After being completely covered by the gelatinous compound, Antonio then described an overwhelming feeling of calmness that prevented him from fighting back leaving many to assume that the strange compound had some sort of effect on his body. As he entered this new docile state, the humanoid figures led him towards a large semicircular room through a tight doorway that had a number of mysterious red symbols written all over it. It was at this point when Antonio entered the room that the true nature of the humanoid's figure became obvious. The figures began to take samples of blood from Antonio's chin leaving a deep mark that would later prove as evidence of the encounter as the scar would last for over two years. These figures then led him into a third room where they pumped a large amount of gas into the chamber that made Antonio violently ill. As Antonio was gasping for breath believing he would soon be killed, he saw the main door in the chamber open with a naked female humanoid creature standing in front of him. The female humanoid creature was described by Antonio as being five foot tall, a height that was similar to the other beings he'd encountered. The female humanoid also seemed to possess large blue cat-like eyes that made her appear to be inhuman. Additional facial features included a small pointed chin. On her head she had long blonde hair and had visible hair on her underarm. Shortly after entering the chamber, the female humanoid then began to force acts on Antonio, making a number of animalistic groans that he claimed scared and disgusted him. When they were finished, Antonio described a feeling of terrible disgust. He then saw that the creature was rubbing her stomach and then pointed upwards. Following this experience, Antonio was then given back his clothes by the other humanoids, and was given a tour of the ship. While taking this tour, he attempted to steal a small clock -like device to show proof of his encounter, but was quickly caught by the creatures and was immediately escorted off the ship. As the ship left, he quickly returned home to find that more than four hours had passed. 
one of the strange side effects he would soon begin experiencing. Following the alien encounter, Antonio began showing signs of extreme radiation sickness. Unaware of what was happening, with growing lesions, nausea, weakness and terrible headaches, he quickly sought help from a journalist researching alien abductions and was examined by Dr. Fonts of the National School of Medicine of Brazil. Antonio had originally believed that he'd caught a form of extraterrestrial disease, but was informed that he was suffering from a sickness caused by a massive dose of radiation at one time. Written in the doctor's report is the following. Among Antonio's symptoms were pains throughout the body, nausea, headaches, loss of appetite, burning sensations in the eyes, lesions at the slightest of light bruising, which went on appearing for months looking like small reddish nodules, harder than the skin around them and painful when touched, each with a small central orifice, yielding a yellow thin waterous discharge. The skin surrounding the wounds presented a hypochromatic violet tinged area. Such levels of radiation sickness would have been impossible to have been exposed to during this time in the 1950s, and would have required Antonio to have gotten a hit of direct dose of radiation equal to the amount that would later be experienced at the Chernobyl incident. Overwhelmingly proving advanced technologies have been within the vicinity of Antonio. However, despite this mountain of evidence that more than supports his claims of the strange event, Antonio would go on to be ridiculed by those around him, and would face a number of mental health issues following the event. Antonio would later go on to become a respected lawyer, and even up until he passed away would claim that what he experienced was completely factual, and not at all a hoax. Throughout human history there have been many that have claimed to have encountered the devil. What's interesting is there's no shortage of stories in which people speak about their encounter with the devil. One of the most famous stories comes from Loftus Hall in Ireland. Loftus Hall is a mansion that's located in Ireland's County Wexford. This impressive looking building is long thought to be haunted, and is even considered by some paranormal researchers to be one of Ireland's most haunted buildings. This is because of the well-known paranormal stories that are attached to the building. Over the years, people who have lived, worked and visited the building have come forward with their paranormal stories. The most famous story is that of a 1765 mystery that still brings in people to this day. For many years the story has been told by the locals, and because of what happened some even refuse to go near the building. The story starts on a stormy night in Ireland. The weather was raging outside and those inside the mansion were bored so they couldn't do anything. During the bad weather though one of the residents noticed an old looking ship coming into the nearby bay. As the residents watched, they could see a large person walking towards the house. Back in these times this wasn't rare, as some people would seek shelter during harsh conditions. Once the large individual reached the door he knocked three times and was greeted by those inside. At this point they could see it was a man. He explained that because the weather was treacherous could he come inside until it calmed down. As mentioned this wasn't uncommon so he was let inside. Strangely enough, the man stayed in the house for over a week. The guests were welcoming though and they didn't mind the man's company. While here, a young resident by the name of Anne started to fall in love with the mysterious man. She would spend many hours a week socialising with him. However, this was soon to come to an end. One rainy night, Anne was playing a game of cards with a stranger. Everything was going fine until she dropped one of her cards. As she bent down to get it, she noticed the man had cloven hooves. She started to panic and let out a loud scream. As she did, the mysterious guest then transformed into the devil. He shot up through the roof, leaving a large hole behind him. Anne was left in a bad way and she was never able to recover from what she'd witnessed. Anne's mental state only got worse and her family decided to lock her away in a room. She stayed here until she passed away. It's thought that after this event the house started to take on a new life. Guests living in the house started to report paranormal activity, with some suggesting that it was Anne, while others thought the mysterious man had brought some kind of curse on the house. 
several clergymen tried to put an end to the hauntings, but were never successful. Some have even seen the spirit of a woman in white wandering the building. Some have said this is Anne and that she's looking for answers for what happened on that night. Many people who have visited the house report seeing a part in the ceiling that doesn't match the rest, and they think this is where attempts have been made to patch up the hole. Some have even said there's a dark presence in the room and that something feels off. Loftus Hall has even been featured on shows such as that of Ghost Adventures. Those who have studied the story have said the mysterious man was trying to lure the woman in, and even take her with him, while others have suggested the story is just an old tale. To this day though, many travel from all around to visit the house that the devil once dined at, and every so often someone even manages to capture a picture of an alleged spirit. This isn't the only encounter with the devil. For years, people have come forward with their stories of allegedly running into the evil entity. One famous story is that of Johann George Faust. However, the story holds a number of details that have left many wondering if such a person ever existed in the first place. In fact, back in the early 17th century, many believed the tale of Johann George Faust was nothing more than a fictitious piece, only to be later confirmed by additional accounts made by a variety of other individuals. According to the story of Johann George Faust, he had started his education at an incredibly young age, first studying to become a physician. It would not be long before he would boast to be one of the greatest doctors of his time, and would go on to learn a variety of other fields, such as becoming a doctor of philosophy, a brilliant alchemist and astronomer, and then finally feeling dissatisfied with the pursuit of science one of the greatest magicians the world has ever known. In multiple accounts of Johann George Faust, he was turned away by the churches of his time that claimed he had given his life to the evil of magic. After he began boasting to anyone passing by that he was such a powerful magician that he could replicate every single miracle that Christ himself had done. Bored with his power, he used his magical ability to summon the devil himself, and worked to make a deal with him. The deal was he would exchange his soul with the devil if the devil would join him and serve him for a full 24 years in return. This led the devil to conjure up anything that Johann George Faust desired, including food, drinks and a variety of other wants and needs. After roughly 16 years of service, Johann George Faust attempted to break the pact, but was persuaded by the devil to enjoy and renew the contract for the remaining 8 years. This was after he had conjured up Helen of Troy to marry him. On the last day of the deal, the devil claimed that by midnight, Johann George Faust would die. As foretold, when midnight came around, many heard a loud explosion come from the room of Johann George Faust, and found his body in pieces all throughout the area. Another strange story comes in the form of a mysterious book. One of the most well-known stories concerning that of a person making a deal with the devil is the existence of the fabled Codex Gygas. The Codex Gygas, which is also known as the Devil's Bible, was supposedly written by the devil himself, and this was after a desperate monk summoned him in exchange for his life. According to the legend, back in 2013 AD, a monastery in Bohemia that made up the monks of the Black Cloth, a radical Christian group of whom devoted their belief to God by performing gruesome acts of starvation and isolation, accepted the terms outlined by one monk who promised to write the greatest book in a single night. The reason for the promise was due to the fact that the monk of the monastery had broken such a sacred rule of their monastery that the sin itself was covered up. Those around him decided that the punishment for the monk would be to wall him up alive, essentially trapping him into a mausoleum. This led the monk to quickly promise the monastery that he could earn redemption by crafting the largest book that held all of human knowledge, including magic, medicine, information on herbs as well as the entire bible in only one night. The monastery agreed to this outlandish promise on the basis of making a deal with the monk. They would only allow him a chance of redemption if he could create the book in one night, but that if he failed they would continue with their punishment regardless. This led to the monk working throughout the night in a moment of panic, gathering all the supplies necessary and binding the massive book before realising that it would be humanly impossible to complete the task. At the stroke of midnight in his desperation, he performed a dark ritual and summoned the devil himself. 
he quickly promised the devil his soul if the devil himself would use his supernatural powers to create the book and save him from death. In an instant, the devil accepted the deal and wrote the entire book in a single night, fulfilling the promise and saving the life of the monk. Interestingly, in the modern day when experts took time to look over the book, they found overwhelming evidence that the entire book was written by a single author in an incredibly short amount of time. The expected amount of time to work on such a massive book was expected to be more than a single author's lifetime. However, the entire piece had a constant style of writing, of which is only possible to accomplish by having a lone author, uses the same type of ink made in the same way, as is common with books with a single author and has an entire page of a drawing of the devil as a reference to the credit of the author. To this day, the book is shrouded in mystery. One of the largest predators to have existed was that of the giant Megalodon. It could also be argued that it was one of the greatest predators to have lived on our planet. Scientists have given many reasons why this giant went extinct. Some range from climate changes while others suggest their main food source which was whales migrated to colder waters. But some scientists and researchers have said the main reason for its decline comes down to its size. This shark was massive. Megalodon could easily reach lengths of up to 60 feet, and had a bite more powerful than that of Tyrannosaurus rex. Strangely enough, although sharing a timeline that would have placed this creature on Earth around the same time as our prehistoric ancestors, suddenly and rapidly the giant Megalodon went extinct. Though many would remark the size of the Megalodon made it an incredible predator that helped to allow the creature to dominate the oceans during its reign. The truth is that the creature's large stature actually proved to be more of a hindrance in nature than an actual benefit. In order to support its massive body weight and muscle growth, the body of the Megalodon had a tremendous metabolism, and this essentially meant the Megalodon had to constantly be on the hunt. This calorie requirement would have forced the Megalodon to eat more than 2,500 pounds of meat a day, and it needed to do this just to survive meaning the creature would have easily starved if prey was to decline in the air as it dominated. Given the fact that the diet of this massive shark was made up of mostly whales, turtles and seals, the Megalodon would have been forced to be in a constant state of hunting just to meet its daily calorie requirement, even going as far as possibly eating its own young in terms of stress, and engaging in risky behaviours just to locate a possible food source. This is one of the reasons why researchers and scientists say the Megalodon went extinct. Scientists say there's no way a predator of this size would be able to survive in the current day. Why then are there scattered reports of people encountering abnormally large sharks in our oceans? These accounts have been reported for hundreds of years, and each report follows a similar theme. One of the most famous accounts comes from Australia. Back in 1918, a researcher by the name of David Steed, an Australian expert in natural history, wrote about the strange event of when a number of fishermen located to the air of the sighting claimed to quit their jobs, and even refused to go back into the open sea after witnessing a sighting of a massive shark. The men went on to say the giant shark had eaten their entire loaded net in one bite. This giant shark also destroyed all of their gear and nearly sunk their entire boat. The reports came from lifelong fishing veterans and not from amateurs unaware of the ocean life around them, more than familiar with whales and already known species of sharks to have prevented them from being frightened. Despite this experience, they still claim the shark they witnessed was far larger than any shark they had ever witnessed. According to the gathered information from the researcher, the shark in question was believed to be over 90 meters long and pure white in color. 90 meters would mean you'd be looking at a shark over 295 feet in length. Some which say discredits the encounter altogether as no shark has ever been recorded reaching those lengths. Others have looked up the case and suggested the men did in fact encounter a real shark, but that the size of the creature has been increased over the years to make the story more outlandish. One suggestion was that the men encountered a shark reaching over 50 feet in length, one thing some researchers picked up on was the colour of the shark. The men said as they were close to the water, they could see a disturbance happening just below the surface. 
one of the crew members then saw a few fish dart away from the disturbance. Shortly after, a large white shark could be seen passing by them. The men couldn't believe what they were seeing and could easily rule out the creature being a type of whale. One theory that's being put forward was that the men did indeed witness a shark, but due to the crew being scared at the time they weren't able to get an accurate measurement of the creature. Animals are always bigger in real life, and if you have a large shark in front of you it will always seem bigger than what it actually was. This is why some people have put forward the theory of it being a whale shark. The largest fish in the ocean is that of the whale shark and some can reach enormous sizes. Whale sharks can be found in tropical oceans around the world. They have a calm temperament and are known to researchers and divers as gentle giants. Although these creatures are normally blue and white in colour, it's been suggested that what the crewmen saw was an albino whale shark. This would explain the ghostly colour of the shark. It can also grow to over 12 metres or 40 feet in length with some fishermen saying they've seen whale sharks reaching well over 20 metres or 65 feet in length. Being close to an albino whale shark would be scary, especially if you've never seen one in the wild before. With that being said, whale sharks only feed on plankton and this goes against what the crewmen saw. They said they watched as the giant shark turned over the craypots and ate everything that was nearby. A whale shark has never been observed doing this and researchers have said it never would. Although the albino whale shark could be a potential candidate, it seems unlikely as it would never eat crayfish. Again, it's been suggested by some researchers that this part of the story has been added. As of today, researchers are no closer to understanding what creature was in the waters that day. Most have suggested the story is a hoax, but those who have studied the case have suggested otherwise, saying that they think the fishermen did encounter a large shark. Some theories have suggested that a small group of megalodon sharks did manage to survive and relocate to deeper waters. Although this sounds far-fetched, they point to the few sightings people have had with large sharks. As of today, the case remains a mystery. Going back in the 1960s, there appeared to be another widely reported sighting of a megalodon creature in the modern day. According to the report, a captain of a 50 foot long fishing ship claimed that a massive white shark larger than the boat itself passed by while the captain and the crew were sitting at anchor. When people began to question the captain and claim that it had been nothing more than a whale, he continued to claim that he was an experienced fisherman and was well aware of what a whale looked like. He confirmed that it was indeed a larger shark and was not similar to that of a whale of any kind. Another large shark that people can still allegedly see today has become known as the Black Demon Shark. This shark is said to live off the coast of Mexico and every so often the locals, tourists, divers and fishermen get a glimpse of this giant. Most of the reports and sightings have been made by a number of fishermen across the Mexican coast and they have claimed to have seen a massive black shark roughly 60 feet in length from resembling the build of a great white shark but with that of a dark coloration across its body and a massively sized tail. Given the fact that many of these reports fit the modern day recreations using megalodon skeletons, as well as their average tail size, it's led many to believe that it could be a possible hunting ground for the creature. Additionally, many of the fishermen that have reported the sighting have often been veterans in the field, never having once claimed such sightings in the past and having more than enough experience with different species of whales throughout the region. One fisherman described fishing in the air and hooking onto a large fish. However, when he brought the fish in, it had been chewed in half. This wasn't unusual because great whites can be found in the area. However, when he looked at the bite marks, they were around three times larger than that of a great whites. To this day, no one's been able to identify what the black demon shark is. In conclusion, mainstream scientists completely debunk any claim involving a megalodon shark, saying that our climate cannot support a shark the size of a megalodon. They go on to say there's simply not enough food and if they were real there would be more than just a few scattered sightings. As mentioned though, some theorists have suggested these giants now live in deeper waters, and only come out when they need to. Something to bear in mind though is 95% of the ocean is still unexplored 
So until someone has completely explored every part of the ocean, we can't say they don't exist. So far scientists have discovered over 242,000 marine species. However, it's been estimated that every year over 2,000 new oceanic species are discovered. While people still report encountering giant sharks, stories of the Megalodon being alive will persist well into the future. Over the years, people have reported seeing angelic beings. Incredibly, some eyewitnesses have said this only happens when they're feeling down, or if something bad has happened in their life. These are usually individual occurrences. However, the Thames in London has been a hotspot for seeing one of these mysterious entities. The anomaly has been called the Thames Angel by those who live in and around London. It's described as being a large angelic being that's sometimes seen hovering over the Thames. Those who have seen the angel have said immediately after laying eyes on it they feel a sense of comfort. With one person saying they were having a bad day and after seeing the angel they had a warm feeling come over them, and that for the rest of the week they was in really high spirits. Only a few have captured this entity on camera as it's said to only appear for a short amount of time. Interestingly, this entity has supposedly been witnessed around London for quite a few years now. Historians who have studied the area have suggested the angel first appeared during the Great Fire of London. After this event, people started talking about a strange entity they couldn't explain. The locals would describe seeing bright lights hovering over the Thames, and giving off an aurora that made people feel better. However, after the Great Fire of London, the sighting stopped, and everybody visiting or living in the area soon forgot about the Angel of the Thames. The Angel returned however when the war started, and once again people started to report seeing a bright angel close to the Thames. One of the most common places to see the Angel is the London Eye. For the past 100 years there have been reports by many people of seeing the Angel. Theories for what or who the entity is depends on who you ask. There are some who say it's the souls of those that have passed away during the Great Fire, while others have suggested it could be a helper sent by God to help the people of London feel better about themselves. One consistency about the angel encounters is that anyone who sees it does always say they feel instantly better. One man said the following about his encounter with the angel. While visiting London with my wife and a few friends, I had a strange encounter. This was back in 2018. Me, my wife and a couple of our friends decided to do a trip to London. While here, we travelled around the city and saw some of the various sites. One of the places my partner really wanted to do was the London Eye. After arriving at the London Eye, my partner and friends decided to get something to eat in one of the local shops. I wasn't hungry so I stayed outside and walked to the wall that was looking over the Thames. However, while I was there I saw something bizarre. As I was looking out over the Thames, I saw a bright figure hovering above the water. I must have seen it for around 4 seconds, but I looked away to grab my camera. When I looked back, the entity was gone. One of the strangest things is, I wasn't mad because I didn't get a picture. In fact, I felt quite the opposite. I had a warm feeling inside as if someone had just told me some really good news. When my partner and friends came out I told them what I'd seen, and they just laughed it off suggesting that what I'd seen was probably a mist or reflection of some kind. However, I was sure that what I'd seen was some type of glowing humanoid, hovering around 10 feet above the Thames. Interestingly, when I got home I decided to google what I'd seen, just to see if anyone else had a similar encounter. To my surprise, other people had also seen the glowing figure, to this day I have no idea what it was I saw. One interesting theory that's been put forward is that the angel only appears when something bad has happened. This could either be to London itself, the surrounding area or on an individual basis. This is because whenever the entity is seen is when someone has received some bad news, or something bad has happened around London. However, there are those who are not entirely convinced. Some have suggested because the angel is most commonly seen near the London Eye, it's actually not real at all and is instead a marketing scheme to help the local businesses around London. 
the area where the angel was seen the most is one of the most popular places in London. Within a couple of hundred metres where the angel is most commonly seen is the London Eye, the Sea Life Centre London Aquarium and the London Dungeons. These are very popular attractions and some have said it's strange where the angel is most commonly seen here, saying that it was an idea put forward by some to help the businesses. Others are using the popularity of the angel to their advantage, selling t-shirts and even doing guided walks. The Thames Angel does have somewhat of a following, with many people travelling to this part of London in the hopes of getting a glimpse of the entity. However, others have suggested the only reason it's seen so much here is because there's always people near these attractions, and people are always looking over the Thames. As of today, people are still seeing the mysterious Thames Angel. What's interesting is all across the world are stories of people encountering these mysterious angels, those who are religious believe these entities are guardian angels, and they look out for us on a daily basis. Some who've been in bad situations like car crashes usually see their guardian angels trying to save them. They believe that in situations like these the lining between our world and theirs become thin, and it's one of the reasons why we're able to see them so clearly. One woman shared her encounter with what she believed was something not of this earth. She said the following, this experience happened to me in 1992. At the time of the event I hadn't been driving that long. While I was driving to my friend's house I hit a curb at around 40 miles an hour. This instantly gave me lift and I rolled the car a few times. Now before I carry on before this experience I was not someone who was religious or believed in anything outside of life on earth. I was very much someone who thought it was only us floating in space. However, this experience did change my outlook on life. After flipping the car, I remember opening my eyes and feeling very scared. After what seemed like forever, I saw a very bright object coming towards me. It instantly reminded me of when people say they see a light at the end of the tunnel. But as this light got closer, I could see it was humanoid in appearance. I couldn't make out any features or see a face, but when it approached me, I felt instantly relaxed. The only way I can describe it is it felt like all my problems had disappeared in that moment in time. As this being approached the car, I could feel it lift slightly. After this, I lost consciousness and don't remember anything else that happened. The next time I opened my eyes, I was in the hospital surrounded by my family. They had told me that when I hit the curb, I was shot out the car and was laying close by. However, I distinctly remember being inside the car and seeing this bright humanoid. The doctors told me I was lucky to be in the state I was, as I only suffered from a few scratches and bruises. I can't understand though how I got outside my car. I am someone who always wears my seatbelt before heading off. I asked about it and the hospital staff said it looked like it had been unclipped. They said however that I likely did it when I was panicking. A few weeks after returning back to normal life I still couldn't get my head around what had happened. Then another bizarre thing started to happen. I started to have dreams about that day, but during the dream I was standing on the pavement. I could see everything that played out from where I was. I saw this being lift me from the car and place me on the ground. The beam was as I remembered it bright and human-like. However, even in my dream I still couldn't make out the face. I know this was just a dream, but I thought it was weird I had it while I was looking for answers. After looking and reading similar stories, some have suggested that a guardian angel was looking over me. I'm still confused about what happened, but it's made me look at life in a different way. I think there is more out there than we realise, and our lives are really only the start. As of today, many people the world over believe there are beings that look out for us in times of need but there are some that think our brains play tricks on us when it's received damage. Many people have reported the same thing after being in accidents, and it's led some to think it's our brain's way of telling you it's damaged. With that being said, there are many that believe these entities are very much real. For the last few decades, dinosaurs have made it into the mainstream media. They've been featured in films, television and books. 
throughout the history of our planet, untold billions of species have come and gone throughout the ages, facing extinction level events that required new life to take on different forms. To this day though, people are able to get their hands on ancient relics of the past, and these include things like dinosaur teeth and bones. Although these ancient giants have been extinct for many years, they still fascinate us to this day, and although we've learned a lot about them so far, there's still an air of mystery surrounding them. Going back a few years ago, it was announced that a creature resembling a dinosaur was discovered in Jasper, which is a small city in India. As you can imagine, the photographs soon made their way around social media, and everyone was trying to figure out what this thing was. It caused excitement among some groups as it was suggested a small group of dinosaurs had somehow survived without being detected by humans. The story goes that an electrician was sweeping the floor inside a substation that had been abandoned for many years. While he was looking around the building, he discovered a strange looking object. After pulling it into the light, he could see what appeared to be the remains of a dinosaur-like creature. The thing that was off about this though is that the creature in question didn't look old, and it certainly wasn't fossilized. The creature reminded many of a theropod dinosaur. Theropods are described as dinosaurs that had hollow bones and three-toed limbs. These are perhaps the most recognizable of the dinosaurs. One thing that's known though is that a dinosaur or any other creature cannot be in such good state after such a long time. Others went down the route of speculating that some scientists had tried to create a dinosaur of their own, but something went wrong and the creature ended up being abandoned. With that being said, not much information came from the story, and it was eventually forgotten about. The story made the rounds in 2017, and it wasn't until early 2019 that we got a potential answer for what this creature may have been. One paleontologist said the following after reviewing the photographs. The interesting thing about this discovery is that I don't think it's a hoax. It looks like a real creature and if I'm being honest I think someone is just having fun. In all fairness it does have a slight resemblance to what a theropod dinosaur would look like. But of course we know this isn't the case here. What we're most probably looking at is some type of mammal. Others have suggested this creature belonged to the weasel family, and I can agree with that. Others haven't seen the funny side and have said that things like this shouldn't make the news, whereas other paleontologists have said that it's fine when stories like this make the news, but it's important we set the record straight on what it is, and that what we are seeing here is some type of mammal that hasn't long passed away. One creature that's been put forward for a possible candidate is that of the Martin. It's interesting to note as well that many animals that pass away don't look like what they did in life, and this seems to be the case with this creature. As of today, researchers and scientists agree that what we're looking at is some type of modern mammal, most likely a martin. This isn't the only controversial discovery that's been made in the field of paleontology. A few years back, a 68 million year old bone from a T-Rex was found that had soft tissue inside and right from the get-go, this discovery left people with many questions. The discovery was made by Mary Sweetshire, a molecular paleontologist at North Carolina State University. The discovery was made in 2005 when her and her team made the incredible discovery. Soft tissue and blood was found inside a Tyrannosaurus rex specimen. Even other scientists were confused as they thought that soft tissue should degrade in less than one million years and here you have a 68 million year old fossil that's still showing soft tissue. However, as of today, new research has suggested that the iron in the dinosaur's body preserved the tissue before it could decay. Another incredible dinosaur discovery was made in March 2011. This was when a group of Canadian miners were doing their routine work at an Alberta mine. The group of workers discovered a dinosaur fossil so well preserved that even its skin color was visible. The fossil could be described as a well-preserved dinosaur mummy of a 110 million year old dinosaur. This 18 foot long dinosaur is known as a nodosaur. All the dinosaur fossils that have been found till now consisted of bones only. This is the only dinosaur that's been discovered in such a perfect condition that its bones, armor and the skin are well-preserved. 
this is the first time we're able to see a dinosaur exactly as it may have been millions of years ago. The scientists believe that Nodosaur was a herbivore, and it had thick half a meter long spikes on its skin. The researchers believe the reason why the fossil has been found in such an amazing condition is because it remained buried in the sea for a long time. According to the archaeologist, the body of the Nodosaur was swept away in a flood and ended up in the sea. When it landed on the sea floor, it created an impact crater because of its weight, and as a result it was quickly covered by the sediment. This protected the body from being scavenged and it also prevented the decomposition. So today we have this perfect fossilized body of a giant that once roamed our planet. It took the experts six years to remove the fossil from the rock that surrounded it. More than 7,000 hours were spent to carefully chip away the rock, and underneath the skin of the dinosaur. This dinosaur fossil which looks more like a statue is present in Alberta's Royal Tyrrell Museum. Researchers have said it's one of the most impressive fossils we've ever discovered. Another mysterious dinosaur is that of the Spinosaurus. Before we can talk about what we don't know about the creature, we need to first discuss what we do know about the Spinosaurus and its nature. The name Spinosaurus roughly translates from Latin to mean the spine lizard. Today, scientists and paleontologists have already constructed a partially completed skeleton of the creature, and this is based off of fossil findings located in Egypt. Although they weren't complete in their findings, they were able to estimate missing bone structures and reconstructing other areas. Of course, as might seem obvious with this type of method, this has led to a wide range of debate among research scientists and paleontologists as to the creature's true size and skeletal structure. However, more fossils are being found every year that help us to get a better picture of the natural species of the creature, and what it most likely would have more accurately looked like in the wild. From the gathered fossils thus far, scientists believe the Spinosaurus was roughly 41 to 59 feet in length, weighing anywhere from 7.7 .7 to 23 tons in weight given its age. The species most likely stood at 14 feet tall, slightly shorter than the 15 to 20 foot tall Tyrannosaurus rex, with a massive sail-like spine running down the length of its back that would have allowed the creature to look much taller compared to other species of its time. Outside of that gathered information, most of the knowledge pertaining to this creature has been entirely speculative. Another interesting feature to notice about the Spinosaurus of which it mostly derives its name, is the long sail-like spine that protrudes from the back of this creature. The function of the dinosaur's hump has been one of the biggest debates in paleontology, with many different groups of paleontologists and evolutionary theorists proposing their own ideas on what the purpose of the spine could have performed. Many scientists believe the spine could have been a tight skin-like structure similar to that of the wing of a bat. They could have helped the creature to regulate its temperature by having large blood vessels running through the sail. Other scientists are quick to assert that the large spine-like structure is massively larger than that of other species with similar formations, and that it could have helped to support a much larger weight than that of a skin-like structure and could have perhaps been similar to that of a large grouping of feathers and could have mostly been used for display purposes, inciting fear in other enemies of a similar size, or even for that of demonstrating breeding behavior. Lastly, one of the least popular theories that circles around the spine is that of the debate surrounding the creature's diet and posture. Scientists believe that the Spinosaurus could have perhaps lived the majority of its life in the water, and that the spine could have acted similar to that of a sail, or to allow the creature to cut through the water much easier and reduce drag, similar to that of a large dorsal fin of a shark. As of today, the Spinosaurus is one of the most debated dinosaurs in the field of paleontology, and every year new theories come out regarding what this creature would have looked like and how it would have behaved. For years now, mysterious creatures have been reported from around the world. Most of these have become famous in their own right. For example, the Loch Ness Monster and Bigfoot. They're so popular they've even spawned various books, movies and TV shows. However, it seems that after all these years we're no closer to coming to a definitive conclusion as to whether they exist. Skeptics will say they're nothing more than hoaxes or misidentified creatures 
whereas those who have allegedly seen them swear they do in fact exist. It's not just in the modern day these creatures have been witnessed. In fact, the first Bigfoot sighting was reported hundreds of years ago. Native settlers will talk about giant men that they shared their land with, and although they refer to them as giants, some have put forward the theory they were talking about Bigfoot. Perhaps though one of the most common cryptids seen are alleged sea monsters. Even to this day, many creatures wash ashore that we're not able to identify. One of these creatures was discovered a while back that caused a lot of speculation was found off New Zealand. The creature was named the Zuayo Maru after the boats that discovered it. This happened on the 25th of April in 1977. At first, when setting out their nets, they were hoping to catch small to medium sized fish. The main fish they was after was mackerel. However, after having their nets out for a short amount of time, they could feel the boat being dragged. This indicated to them that something big was in the net. As they were bringing it in though, they slowly started to see the mysterious creature that had been tangled up in their net. When the mysterious looking creature was brought to the surface, they could immediately tell it was no longer alive, and they speculated it passed away a while ago. One of the first things the crew noticed was its long neck and what appeared to be slender flippers. They hadn't seen anything like this before and as the news broke, many people across the scientific world were interested in what they captured. After taking measurements, the team stated the creature was over 10 meters in length. One of the first theories that was put forward was that the creature in question was that of a whale. Scientists from all over the world said that these creatures look different when they're in a decaying state. Going on to say that many of the large unidentified sea monsters that wash ashore turn out to be decaying whales. When the tissues break down, they can take on an entirely different look, suggesting that going back years ago, this is why many people thought sea monsters existed, because they were misidentifying once living whales. With that being said, some did believe that what the fishman had captured was a real life sea monster, suggesting that it could have been a plesiosaur. The plesiosaur is an extinct marine reptile that used to swim in our oceans hundreds of millions of years ago. The idea was put forward by some theorists because of the look of the creature. Paleontologists have pointed out the main features on a plesiosaur was that of its flippers, and on this creature they seem to be very much present. Those who have seen the pictures say that it has paddles and a long neck, two very distinct features that a plesiosaur had. Another thing these creatures had were small heads, and once again this creature seems to have that. Cryptozoologists have put forward the idea that a small group of these plesiosaurs were able to survive the extinction event, saying they were able to do this by diving deep and surviving on the rich sources of food the ocean has to offer. However, scientists have said this is not the case, and that no plesiosaur has ever been discovered. Every single year though, scientists have been finding the existence of long thought to be extinct species. Some of these include marine animals that were roaming in our oceans back during the time of the dinosaurs. For example, one of these is known as the coelacanth. This creature was swimming in our oceans hundreds of millions of years ago, and scientists said they became extinct around 80 million years ago. But in 1938, a living coelacanth was discovered in the Indian Ocean near the southern coast of Africa. Incredibly, these creatures have been living since the time of the dinosaurs. With this much evidence gathered by the scientific community, it's no surprise then there appears to be large tales involving the existence of real life encounters with ancient creatures even in the modern day. When the creature was brought up, the captain didn't want to keep it on board, saying that firstly it smelled bad and that he didn't want the creature on the fresh fish. However, he was convinced by the other crewmates to keep the catch. After taking a few photographs, one of the crew members said they should take a sample. However, the creature did end up getting thrown overboard after the sample and photos were taken. Incredibly, shortly after taking these samples, an incredible discovery was made. A professor from Japan declared that the samples given to him matched that of an extinct plesiosaur. As you can imagine, the scientific community couldn't believe they had captured a real life ancient marine reptile and due to it only passing away not long ago, this would mean there's many more out there waiting to be discovered. 
After this news broke, many people headed out to the spot where it was discovered and tried to find the original creature. However, after getting there, no one could find a single thing. It seemed like the ocean had claimed the creature. However, shortly after the excitement, science stepped in and announced the creature was in fact a basking shark. As mentioned earlier, alleged sea monsters are witnessed by many people every year, and when they're initially discovered, it's hard to give an accurate ID as to what the creature is. This was the case for another sea creature that went by the name of Trunko. Back on the 24th of October in 1924, a strange and unexplainable monster washed ashore after witnesses combing the beaches claimed to have seen an even more impossible to explain scenario playing before them. Out in the waves close to the shore, there appeared to be two large killer whales working to take down an even larger creature in the ocean that not a single person standing watching could explain. The ocean monster was described as having a long and massive trunk similar to that of an elephant, a thick white fur wrapped around its entire body similar to that of a polar bear, and the bloated and massive body of a small whale. Given the massive trunk extending from the face of the white furry beast, many gave the creature the name of the Trongo, and believed it to be a strange monster unknown by researchers of the time. Despite the body rotting away in the beaches for more than 10 days with a wide variety of people visiting the site, not a single scientist or researcher went to the body and none of it was preserved for future study. This has led many to believe that perhaps the creature was nothing more than a large whale and a case of mistaken identity. Given the fact that nothing could have been preserved of the location, it's hard to assume that the creature was a case of mistaken identity and the witnesses that recount the tale say overwhelmingly this wasn't the case. Unfortunately, it appears we may never know what the creature really looked like, and where it came from, making it an impossible to explain ocean mystery. Today, many cryptid websites on the internet have removed the Tronco creature, and accepted the explanation of an old bloated carcass as the cause of the sighting, despite numerous witness claims more than detailing the strangeness of the creature. What's odd about this though is even to this day people have come forward and allegedly seen more of these creatures. Going back a few years ago, one managed to find its way on the beach, again covered in thick white fur. However, scientists said the same thing, that the creature in question was a whale and what people were seeing was the tissues breaking down. It seems that as of today, the world of science has done a great job at identifying the many mysterious creatures that have appeared on our beaches. With that being said, that doesn't mean there isn't mysterious creatures lurking in the depths. Around 95% of our ocean is still unexplored, and every year we are discovering hundreds of new ocean creatures. Like the coelacanth, that was thought to be long extinct and if you told researchers they were still living you probably would have been dismissed immediately. However, as it turns out these ancient creatures are still roaming our oceans. Some have put forward the idea that many of the ocean creatures that lived during the same time of the dinosaurs dived to deeper depths, and have adapted to them living off the deeper sea creatures. So perhaps in the near future an ancient relic will once again make itself known. Antarctica has always been at the centre of a wide number of different mysteries. What's interesting is that it appears Japan is no stranger to these theories and have been at the centre of rumours surrounding the icy continent. It appears that over the past few years, stories of strange humanoid creatures living in Antarctica have slowly been circulating all around Japan. According to the Japanese whale industry, many crew members aboard so-called whale research ships have reported seeing strange humanoid creatures on the continent. These aren't just one-off reports either, Many have come forward with their alleged encounter and each one follows a similar theme. Reports detail that when approaching the continent of Antarctica, Japanese crew members will report seeing what appears to be large giants laying out in the ocean that appear humanoid in shape. These creatures are described as being 20 to 30 meters in length and having a completely white skin tone. Others have reported that the creature was originally mistaken as being a large submarine in the distance, before getting closer and seeing hands, fingers, eyes and a mouth. This led to the name of the Ningen by the Japanese crew, 
whereas others simply refer to the creatures as the Antarctic humans. To this day a few images can be seen online, but some suggest these are recreation and not the actual creature itself. Those that have had a close encounter with them have described them as being a calm creature, and do not mind humans being in the area. A few eyewitness reports have come forward in recent years. However, these need to be taken lightly as there's no way of proving these are genuine. For example, one Navy official said the following about his encounter. The Navy is no stranger when it comes to missions in Antarctica. I'm of an old age now and was lucky enough to be present on several of these missions. I won't go into detail about what happened as that's not the point of the story. My story is about something I witnessed that to this day I struggle to explain. While in Antarctica, me and a few crew members were looking overboard when we could see something big in the distance. While with the Navy, I was lucky enough to see some of the world's most beautiful creatures, and that's exactly what I thought was happening on this particular occasion. However, this wasn't the case. As we came closer to this entity, we couldn't work out what it was. At first from a distance, it appeared to be a large white whale laying on the surface. Me and the other men thought it was a whale that passed away, but as we got closer, we were able to get a much better look at what this thing was. However, this just made things worse. What we saw appeared to be a mix between a humanoid and a whale. This thing looked like a whale but had massive human-like arms. The noise of the boat caused the creature to slowly move away from its position, which gave us a great opportunity to see its body and arms in full. The hands had fingers that were connected by what appeared to be webbing-like skin. I couldn't see the head but got a good look at its body. It was very similar to that of a beluga whale's, white and smooth all over. If it wasn't for the long arms and fingers, I would have guessed this thing was a whale. The whole experience lasted only a matter of minutes before the creature swam into their dams. Taking a photograph at that moment in time was not an option, and even if I was allowed, I'm pretty sure I wouldn't have been allowed to keep it for obvious reasons. As I've said to this day, I still remember the event and struggle to think what I encountered. Without proof, my story is just a story. I can still describe in detail what I witnessed, but I don't know what it was I saw. Although the majority of these stories comes from the icy continent, others have shared their story of encountering something similar in other locations across the world. This has led some theorists to speculate that these creatures actually inhabit a wide area, and aren't just confined to the cold waters of our world. In Sweden, residents have been coming forward and saying that when on their boats they keep seeing strange creatures in the water. They describe them as aquatic creatures and some people have come forward and given detailed accounts. One person said that while on their boats they could see a large white object below the surface. After slowing the boat down to get a better look, the creature in question slowly swam past. Not knowing what these creatures are, many have tried to take photographs, but the majority of them are blurry and don't show anything that can be positively ID'd. These creatures are thought to resemble large humanoids and don't look like any known marine creature. While some videos have emerged showing these creatures, most agree they're fake. However, the eyewitnesses stand by their testimonies and say that these strange creatures are attracted to their bones. Over the last few years, Sweden has had its fair share of strange goings on. UFOs have been reported here constantly and it's said to be a hotbed for USOs. An unidentified submerged object or USO is any object or optical or mechanical detection phenomenon of unknown origin and these are observed underwater that remain unidentified even after thorough investigation. Most people who see these USOs usually report flashing lights under the water. Some eyewitnesses say that these crafts can enter the water without making any disturbance. However, photos and videos of these alleged crafts is debatable, while some have also reported seeing creatures next to these crafts. Some believe the creature responsible for the sightings could be the Ningang that have been seen close to Antarctica. These creatures are usually encountered in cold regions, but in the last few years reports have been coming from all over the world. 
these creatures are said to often get misidentified as whales, and some eyewitnesses have said it's really hard to tell the difference unless you're really close. Sometimes they're described as having fins or a large mermaid-like tail instead of legs, or even tentacles. Although the creatures are said to be quite relaxed, it's said that if a human approaches they will disappear quickly. These creatures are believed to be curious but shy. All of these stories tend to follow a similar theme. Usually when someone encounters them it's always brief. Ningen sightings seem to occur most frequently at night, making them all the more difficult to photograph. It's been suggested by some that this creature is responsible for the encounters in Sweden. Most of the reports seem to match the Ningeng. However, skeptics believe that eyewitnesses are just seeing whales or other marine life. It seems that until better photographs can be taken, this creature will remain a mystery. A more out there theory is some believing these creatures are related to the mysterious nightcrawlers. Ancient American legends suggest that these creatures have lived on our planets for a very long time, saying that they came here from a planet that consists mainly of swampland, and this is one of the main reasons why they have very long legs. Some have said though that they spend the majority of their time in and around the oceans, and occasionally come onto land. They say this is one of the main reasons why we don't see them very often, and that their descriptions and the Ningens are very similar. Over the years the creatures have been seen around the areas of California. They've been described as a strange ethereal looking creature. They've often been at the center of a wide number of skepticisms, as the only evidence of an encounter with the nightcrawler is that of unedited security footage. Spotting the strange entity walking through the backyard of homes and traveling great distances. Additionally, the nightcrawler is described as being a creature easy to fake as the entity looks similar to that of a large white cloth draped over a person with long legs. All that person has to do is walk slowly on footage. This is led to a number of video experts looking over the footage to confirm whether or not the footage was edited in any way. Not only did they find the video was genuine, but that by using the angle and direction of the cameras, they were able to create a complete working path of the creature crossing many different parts of the city before disappearing altogether. To those that believe the creature is nothing more than the use of practical effects, the nightcrawlers have been of varying sizes to that of the height of a child to a man, and even that of a cat, but still always walking with two long white legs and no arms of any kind. Additionally, the billowing movements of the wind correlate with the movement of the creature, along with shadows and lights showing the creature occupies three-dimensional space, and not edited over the footage. Footage of the strange nightcrawlers have continued over several years, and has even led many to believe that the creature is genuine. Every so often someone will come forward with a sighting, but because they're not expecting to see one, capturing footage of the elusive creature has been challenging. One thing to bear in mind is that much of the ocean is still unexplored, and researchers have said we know more about the surface of the moon than we do our very own oceans, so it's anyone's guess as to what could be lurking in their depths. For years now, people have been encountering mysterious creatures. Although most of these end up being hoaxes, misidentified wildlife, pranks or even natural phenomena, there are some that have been encountered that have left people with more questions than answers. One of the most interesting things to happen in these types of cases is when police officers get involved. Many people, including the officers, are critical when it comes to believing there are mysterious and paranormal events happening around the world. However, when these individuals see the creatures for themselves, they very quickly change their tone. This happened to be the case for a mysterious creature that was reported a few decades ago. Back in 1988, a 17-year-old local resident known as Christopher Davis claimed that he was driving near the location of Scapor Swamp, and during this trip he struck a creature that was described as being green. Completely wet, seven feet tall, had the skin of a lizard, possessed three fingers on both hands, had glowing wide red eyes, and was covered from head to toe in snake-like scales. 
this creature would later be referred to by locals as the Lizardman of Scapel Swamp, and further sightings of the creature would continue for years to come. Though many claim to have spotted the creature, even occasionally having direct encounters on the roads located nearby the Scapel Swamp, others claim they'd encountered the Lizardman more than a few miles away from the swamp. This would eventually lead to many sightings of the creature that a local radio station known as WCLS offered a $1 million reward to anyone that could capture the creature alive and bring it into the studio. Though many people believed it to be nothing more than a publicity stunt, the seriousness of the creature would later be the focus of the nearby military base as an airman known as Kenneth Hall, that worked at the nearby Shore Air Force Base would go on to file a police report claiming that he'd encountered the lizard man. He encountered this creature close to Highway 15 and even claimed to have taken a shot at the creature. He believed that he had wounded the creature but couldn't locate his body. Despite the police report and the proof of a number of scales and blood being found at the location, Kenneth Hall was arrested for claims of an unlawfully carrying a weapon and attempting to file false police reports. This led many to believe that though the military may be actively hunting and looking for the creature, they are also working to cover up the existence of the lizard men to prevent mass panic. As some have pointed out, it's hard to think of an animal someone could misidentify as this. Over the last 30 years, a few reports have come from the region of Scapel Swamp. Interestingly, most of these encounters seem to happen at night when people are alone. The eyewitness accounts all follow a similar theme seeing a large bipedal humanoid-like creature doing things a normal human being wouldn't be able to do. For example, one eyewitness said the creature she saw was extremely strong, and was able to move a car simply by lifting it up. This led to the locals living near the swamp at the time to go into panic mode. Residents were seeing and reporting a large unidentified creature and many wanted answers for what was going on. Perhaps one of the most interesting developments to happen in the case was on the 4th of July 1988. At the time, the Lee County Sheriff's Office was called in to investigate a report of a damaged car. This happened while it was parked overnight at Brownstown outside of Bishopville. What's interesting is this is just outside of Scapel Swamp, and happened during the height of the reports. Although these kinds of callouts are not uncommon, the officers were about to find out that something seemed off about this case. For example, when two officers arrived, they picked up on the fact there were large tooth marks and scratches running across the entire car. Not only this, but muddy footprints could be seen on and around the car, proving that something large had been in the area that night. Sheriff Liston Truesdale was one of the first on the scene, and was surprised at what the locals were saying. Firstly, the locals were making claims about there being a large lizard-like creature in the area, and that it had been causing damage for a few consecutive nights. As mentioned though, the most famous account was made by 17-year-old Christopher Davis, who said his car was damaged by a 7-foot-tall lizard creature that had three fingers. Although for some the claims sounded ridiculous, it was eventually picked up by several news networks and actually brought in people to the area hoping to see this mysterious giant lizard. However, although large crowds gathered, no one was able to catch a glimpse of the giant lizard. Two sheriffs took cast of the alleged footprints made by the beast. They were said to have measured around 14 to 15 inches in length, and even showed details of the toes. What people find strange though is the sheriffs were talked out of sending them to the FBI for further analysis. This come down to a biologist advising them the tracks they brought in were in fact unclassifiable. This led to even more confusion about what creature left behind the tracks. A South Carolina Marine Resources Depart spokesman even came forward and said the tracks didn't match and couldn't be misidentified for any recorded animal. Wildlife experts later came forward however and said the footprints most likely belonged to local wildlife. With that being said, there are those that believe the footprints are real, and that the officials didn't want the truth getting out. Regardless, the tracks were quickly forgotten about, and the whole mystery surrounding the lizard man eventually died down. Fast forward to 2008 and a couple came forward with an interesting story. 
they said that while in South Carolina their car was damaged by an unknown creature. They went on to say that scales and scratches could be seen around the car, and they couldn't think of anything that could have done this. Another couple who were driving in the area of South Carolina had this to say about their encounter. While driving close to Scapor Swamp, we encountered what we thought was the Lizard Man. We've gone over this night so many times and it's the only thing we think it could be. As my husband and I were passing through the area, something caught his eye in the mirror. He said it looked as though someone was trying to wave him down. Because we weren't travelling fast, we decided to reverse back and see if the person needed help. We quickly got back to the point where my husband saw the person and tried to look for them. I told my husband I would get out of the car and walk around to see if I could see anyone. However, he told me to stay in the car. Looking back, this was a good idea as it was getting dark and we couldn't see much. We must have waited for several minutes and because we couldn't find anyone, we decided to go on our way. However, just as we were about to set off, we heard a scraping sound on the back of the car. My husband put his head outside the window and immediately he swore. As I looked back, I caught a glimpse of what appeared to be a seven-foot slender-looking creature. I didn't get a look at its face, but I noticed this thing had a long tail and a green and yellowish coloured body. This all happened within ten seconds as my husband quickly floored it from the scene. Ever since then, we've been convinced that what we saw was the Lizard Man of Scapor Swamp. What's interesting though is some skeptics have suggested the Lizard Man is something else. A few years back, some people put forward the idea the Lizard Man of Scapor Swamp was in fact a bear. They said this would explain the majority of the encounters and sightings of the creature. Black bears can be found around South Carolina and they grow up to 5 to 7 feet. This is around the height that the alleged Lizard Man of Scapor Swamp is. This would also explain the scratch marks found on people's car. It's been suggested that if you've left food or other items in your car, a bear may be able to sense this and has tried to get into your car. This in turn would leave scratch marks and in some cases blood. There are still some however that believe the Lizard Man of Scapor Swamp is genuine with some comparing its myth and story to that of the Mothman or Bigfoot. Every couple of years it seems that someone comes forward with an alleged sighting of the creature. Some cryptozoologists believe the creature may actually be an unknown creature that lives in swamps around the world. However, it seems that for people to take this creature serious, we need some solid evidence that it's living around the area of Scapor Swamp. In the last few years, no reports of the Lizard Man have been made making many people believe that whatever the creature was is now gone. The first unmanned mission to the moon was in 1959 by the Soviet lunar program, with the first man landing being Apollo 11 in 1969. The primary objective of Apollo 11 was to complete a national goal set by President John F. Kennedy on May 25, 1961, perform a crewed lunar landing and return to Earth. Additional flight objectives included scientific exploration by the lunar module, deployment of a television camera to transmit signals to Earth, and deployment of a solar wind composition experiment and seismic experiment package. During the exploration, the two astronauts were to collect samples from the moon and return them to Earth. They were also given instructions to photograph the lunar surface as much as they could. On July 20th, 1969, American astronauts Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin became the first humans to ever land on the moon. About six and a half hours later, Armstrong became the first person to ever walk on the moon. As he took his first steps, Armstrong famously said, That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Armstrong and Aldrin spent 21 hours 36 minutes on the moon's surface. After a rest period that included seven hours of sleep, the ascent stage engine fired at 124 hours 22 minutes. It was shut down 435 seconds later when the Eagle reached an initial orbit of 11 by 55 miles above the moon, and when Columbia was on its 25th revolution. 
Interestingly, over the years, some people have come forward with some interesting photographs that could prove that something else was witnessed on the moon. Going back a while ago, a strange anomaly was picked up on by eagle-eyed viewers looking through archive footage of Apollo 11. The photograph in question is that of the moon. However, when people zoomed in, they could see what appeared to be an object hovering slightly above the moon. The photograph has earned itself the name of Breakoff. As some have suggested, a piece of the moon somehow broke off when the photograph was taken. What's strange though is a photograph taken seconds later doesn't show the anomaly, and this has led some to put out their theories for what the object could be. The original photograph was sent to NASA by some amateur astronomers in the hopes of getting to the bottom of what the object is. However, NASA hasn't provided an answer for what the object could be. Going back, the former head of a secret government program whose task to investigate UFO sightings came forward with bold claims. They told several media outlets that extraterrestrial life may exist. They further said that millions of dollars had been put into the research of exotic technologies affiliated with unidentified aerial phenomena. These headlines caught the attention of many worldwide, as for the last 80 years people have been coming forward with their encounters with mysterious lights in the sky. It's important to remember that a UFO is simply an object that someone cannot identify at that moment in time, hence why it stands for Unidentified Flying Object. It's only been in recent years that the UFO has been linked to extraterrestrial beings. With that being said though, the thought of planet Earth being visited by another form of life is exciting for some. Some have said if you're going to believe any reports of UFOs, you might as well trust those coming from the men who have actually been to space. The list of those who have made claims of sightings includes Edgar Mitchell, Caddy Coleman and Dr. Brian O'Leary. Buzz Aldrin has also spoken of his own experience on board the Apollo 11 when they saw something flying alongside them. At first they thought it was the final stage of the detached rocket, until mission control confirmed it was over 6,000 miles away from them. Dr. Brian O'Leary, a former NASA astronaut, said the following, There is abundant evidence that we are being contacted, that civilizations have been visiting us for a very long time that their appearance is bizarre from any kind of traditional materialistic western point of view, that these visitors use technologies of consciousness. They use co-rotating magnetic discs for their propulsion systems that seem to be a common denominator of the UFO phenomenon. NASA scientist and photoanalysis George Leonard is someone who has a story to tell. He worked for NASA and was able to get his hands on various official NASA photographs of the moon. While working for NASA, one of his jobs was to study thousands of photographs that were taken by the space agency. Not only that, but he spoke with dozens of NASA officials, and was able to listen first-hand to astronaut recordings. He then published a book called Someone Else is on the Moon, and inside the book included many of these photographs. However, because some of the photographs are of low quality, some have said they can't be taken as fact, and could actually be faked. From a scientific point of view, they say that what people are seeing is known as pareidolia. Scientists describe this as our brain playing tricks on our mind, and say that our brains are hardwired to see faces and images and everyday things. Another mysterious thing was picked up on during a live broadcast of Apollo 11. In Western Australia, many residents who were watching the live show said they saw an unusual occurrence. One viewer called Una Ronald watched the broadcast by NASA and was surprised at what she saw. Interestingly, the residents of Honeysuckle Creek in Australia said they saw a different broadcast to the rest of the world. Shortly before Armstrong stepped on the moon's surface, the picture changed on their TVs. The residents said it went from a dark picture to a bright one, and that during this change they could still hear the voice transmission. The actual film of Apollo 11 was broadcast from Australia, but these residents noticed something that no one else did, which is why they said they was watching a different broadcast to the rest of the world. As Una and others were watching Neil Armstrong walking on the surface of the moon, they spotted what they said was very clearly a coke bottle, and that it was kicked in the right hand side of the picture. Una couldn't believe what she saw and phoned her friends to see if they'd seen the same thing. 
Unfortunately, they missed it. The next day, the walk was being broadcast so they tried to see if they could see it. However, it didn't appear and Una even suggested the rerun looked slightly different. Others did come forward and say they saw the same thing, causing an article to be published in the Western Australian newspaper. Going back a while ago, a video was making its way around social media suggesting that Buzz Aldrin admitted we'd never went to the moon. A little girl asked him the question, why have we not been back to the moon? And he said the following. That's my question. I want to know, but I think I know. Because we didn't go there and that's the way it happened. And if it didn't happen, it's nice to know why something didn't happen, so in the future, if we want to keep doing something, we need to know why something stopped in the past that we wanted to keep doing. So what people are focusing on is the part where he said we didn't go there. Many have come forward and said he slipped up and finally admitted we never went to space. Websites posted this at the time and said he didn't mean to say this, with many picking up on his body language and suggesting that he was telling the truth. However, during that same interview, he goes into detail of why we never went back to the moon. He explains that it was a very expensive mission and that's the main reason we haven't gone back. He goes on to say that we don't want to keep redoing things we've already done, and we should look to future projects. The reason people could be getting confused is because he worded his answer badly, and this is what was picked up on. Buzz makes a good point about money and this could be the reason we never went back. Back in 1973, the total cost of the Apollo program reported to Congress was $25.4 billion. So spending this money on a mission they've already achieved would be pointless. It would make more sense for NASA to spend money on other ventures. However, not everyone is so convinced, and as mentioned, people think he actually let out the truth. Another thing that was reported recently was that NASA lost the original footage of the first moonwalk. Incredibly, although this sounds like some outlandish theory, there is some truth to this. NASA had this to say. NASA searched for but could not locate some of the original Apollo 11 data tapes. Original in the sense that they directly recorded data transmitted from the moon. An intensive search of archives and records concluded that the most likely scenario was that the program managers determined there was no longer a need for the tapes, since all the video and data were recorded elsewhere, and they were erased and reused. NASA also said the data from these original tapes were relayed to the Manned Spacecraft Center, further saying the following. The video was recorded there and in other locations. There's no missing video from the Apollo 11 moonwalk. Interestingly, it was announced that a NASA intern is selling what he says are the lost Apollo 11 tapes. The worker said he bought the tapes from the government and wanted to sell them. However, NASA officials have said the tapes don't contain any material that hasn't already been preserved. NASA had this to say about the tapes. If the tapes are as described in the sale material, they're two-inch videotapes recorded in Houston from the video that's been converted to a format that could be broadcast over commercial television, and contain no material that hasn't been preserved by NASA. All across North America are reports and tales of a creature that's become known as the Dogman. It's been described as looking like a strange werewolf-like creature and seems to possess supernatural strength and abilities. Some eyewitnesses have often compared the creature to a more dog-like Sasquatch, whereas others believe it to be more of a werewolf beast and at the centre of Skimwalker legends. Interestingly, for the past 60 years there have been many reports about these creatures, and as with most of these tales, the majority of these stories follow a similar theme. Researchers have managed to pinpoint the first Dogman sighting to 1887. This was said to have occurred in Wexford County. The story goes that two lumberjacks were having a conversation when one of them spotted something mysterious. He described it as having a man's body and a dog's head. When they noticed it, they quickly left the scene not wanting to stay and risk getting hurt by the large creature. Fast forward to 1961 and a security guard witnessed something similar in Big Rapids, Michigan. Most of the encounters with these creatures are just stories, and there is no way of backing up what the individual saw. 
However, the security guard remembered that he had a camera on him, and was in fact able to snap a picture of the large beast. Those who have analysed it says it matches other eyewitness descriptions of the Dogman. Although the majority of the Dogman sightings are from Michigan, there have been some outside of this area that have come forward with similar experiences. One of these occurred in California. One of the strangest reported encounters of the Dogman creature comes from that of a report made in Sacramento, California. According to the reporter, the story circles around that of a woman who claimed to have encountered the Dogman creature near the city of Sacramento, and this happened back in 1953. The sighting is believed to have taken place roughly 1,000 feet west of the American River, a short 2,000 feet east of the state capital in a small house owned by a small family in the region. According to the woman, she had this sighting when she was roughly 12 years old, and it happened when she was watching TV and laying down on the couch. As she was laying there, she claimed to have noticed a large mass moving in the window as if someone was staring into the home. She quickly got up and went to the window to see a large face of a dog that seemed to be staring into the room. She claimed that the head of the dog looked very large, much larger than that of a coyote or a normal dog of any kind, saying that it had a long straight snout and it was too dark to see what colour it was, but suggested it could have been a dark grey and said it had glowing red eyes. She ran from the window and then noticed the creature began to stand up on its hind legs, and estimated it was over 5 feet above the ground. She screamed for her parents to come which scared the dogman away before anything else could occur. She quickly went outside and claimed there was nothing nearby and that the window was far too tall for a dog to be standing up and looking in. Unfortunately, nothing more can be gathered from this report, as the woman wasn't sure of the exact time of day that the event occurred. One of the stranger reports surrounding that of the dogman comes from New York. According to the report, a woman had arrived home a few minutes after dusk in a rural location, while her two children aged 2 and 11 were sitting in the back seat of the car. The woman reported that as soon as she stepped out the vehicle, she had a sixth sense that something was watching her. She also said there was no noise of any crickets or people nearby. This led to her grabbing the kids and rushing them inside the house. As she approached the front door, she claimed she heard a loud growl that was described as being a deep tone, and similar to that of a large angry dog. Before anything else could happen, the woman got herself and her two kids in the house, and closed and locked the door quickly behind her. It wasn't long before she called the husband to come home quick because a large animal was outside. When the husband came home, it was discovered at this point in time the family cat had gone missing. So the husband went looking around nearby to see if perhaps there was any bears or large wild dogs in the region. After a moment of searching, the husband also began to notice a strange silence only to spot a large creature running through the forest. This led him to take aim at the creature but it was running too fast and was able to get away. This led to the couple to reporting the encounter as that of the dogman, as any other explanation was impossible to explain. Unfortunately, their cat was never found. A woman from England encountered what she thought was a dogman-like creature. She saw the creature while out in her garden. She said the following about the encounter. I have a strange story. Me and my husband own a large house that has a lot of land. Our garden backs onto a large wooded area and we have fences so it separates us from the woods. On this particular evening, we were sitting outside towards the end of our garden. At the bottom, we have a setup of chairs and tables. After sitting here for an hour or so, my husband decides to head inside for a shower. I told him I would be inside shortly. After around 30 minutes of him being gone, I started to hear these strange noises. It sounded like someone was walking behind our fence. This was odd because it was gone 10pm at night and usually we don't get people back there. I tried to ignore the noises but every so often I could hear the snapping of twigs. Being a naturally nosy person, I decided to try and find out what was going on. I located a slit in the panels and was able to peep through. 
I was then shocked to see what looked like a large hairy man. This initially threw me off as it looked like something from a movie. I tried to call my husband's phone but he was already in the shower. I started to get worried as this figure appeared to be quite big, and as mentioned our property is out in the stings. This time the creature was on the floor scuffing up the leaves. This time I got a better view, and the only way I can describe it is it looked like a giant hairy man. I quickly made my way back to my house and as I opened the door my two dogs ran out. I had no way of stopping them and the first place they went to was the bottom of the garden. When they got there they started barking non-stop. I ran upstairs and told my husband what I had seen. Once he got dressed we went out to investigate the woodland. In the area adjacent to our house were scratch marks on the trees and what appeared to be human-like footprints. These footprints though were massive. My husband compared them to his size 11 boots and they were much bigger than that. After this I started to get worried and asked if we could go back inside. Once we got inside my husband could see I was worried and asked me what I wanted to do. I told him that maybe it was a wild animal, but this thing didn't look like any wild animal I'd seen before. It couldn't have been a wolf either as we don't get these in England. Another encounter with the alleged dogman has come from India. Two watchmen have reported seeing a mysterious creature they can't explain. The two men have said that these reports keep happening around flea markets. One of the issues though is that these men have never seen anything like this before. The descriptions have been vague, with one eyewitness saying the creature was black and had glowing red eyes, saying that before encountering it they had a strange sensation. Another eyewitness gave a better description and said the creature they saw was a black dog that had glowing red eyes. This isn't the first time a creature like this has been observed. Going back a few years ago people from all over the world started to report seeing large black like dogs, and nearly everyone who saw them said they had glowing red eyes. Each of these encounters followed a similar theme. Usually the person would be alone. It would be late at night the dog would be abnormally large, and it would have glowing red eyes. When reported most of these encounters are just brushed aside, and officials suggested that what people were seeing is stray dogs. However the eyewitnesses have said that what they've encountered wasn't any ordinary dog. It's interesting to note that the Navajo Native Americans have been talking about these creatures for years. Though many know them as the Dogman, the Navajo call them the Skinwalkers. They say the description of these creatures is like a human, but instead they have werewolf-like features. The Navajo describe them as possessing superhuman strength, being able to move very fast and having the ability to easily take down a human. Although many people have come forward with their reports, as of right now the mysterious dogman remains a mystery until more evidence can be gathered. Over the years researchers and scientists working for NASA have done a great job at uncovering some of the mysteries of our universe. However there have been some anomalies and signals that researchers haven't been able to explain. Space is one of the places that humans will never fully explore. It's anyone's guess as to what's out there, and with it being home to hundreds of billions of planets it's not crazy to say there could be all walks of life inhabiting various planets. Over the years scientists have discovered some strange mysteries out in the vastness of space. One of these has become known as the Space Roar. Back in 2009, top researchers at the Goddard Space Flight Center sent a device up into space via a giant balloon, and this was known as Arcade. Arcade was an acronym that stood for Absolute Radio Meter for Cosmology, Astrophysics and Diffuse Emissions, which details its mission as being that of a searching device capable of picking up diffuse radiation caused by the universe's earlier stars. It was a huge surprise then that instead of picking up on these weak signals, the Arcade device captured data that scientists have described as a space roar. Although a large amount of radio waves caused via radiation was expected by researchers at the Goddard Space Flight Center, what was recovered and analyzed turned out to be radio waves six times the normal amount expected to be heard, as well as their origin points being from a galaxy 2.5 million light years away. 
This has led many to speculate the possibility that perhaps this enormous amount of background radio waves found in our universe could be that of an extraterrestrial civilization, and their frequencies sent out into the vacuum of space. This could very well be the case considering our radio wave frequencies have been spreading out like a bubble from Earth since the first transmissions were sent out over a little 100 years ago, and given the fact that these extraterrestrial civilizations could predate us by millions of years, we could be picking up on the faintest signals that have reached us over a vast distance of both space and time. Scientists struggle to find any other cause for this mystery, and have left many wondering if whether or not we're truly alone in the universe, or we're merely the latest species to tune into an old age galactic conversation. This isn't the only mysterious sound. Deep in the vastness of space is some strange object that continues to throw out extremely large blasts of radio waves out from around it. Interestingly, these sounds travel in all directions and they also travel at the speed of light. The research group behind the discovery is confident that in a few years, more crater theories will emerge to help explain these strange radio anomalies coming up from deep space, and what it could mean for the extreme local galactic environment. Recently, NASA scientists announced that mysterious sound in space is baffling them. They said the strange whistling sounds were detected in the Van Allen probe's mission, for those unaware, the Van Alien probes are a pair of donut-shaped robotic spacecrafts which can be found currently orbiting the Earth. When NASA were talking about the sounds, it was their descriptions of them that threw many people off. They say their sounds can be attributed to different electromagnetic waves, which penetrate almost every single known area of space. A spokesman for NASA said the following, Although space is technically a vacuum, is still full of electrically charged particles which come into constant interaction with the magnetic and electric fields of the various objects throughout space. What the researchers have now found out is that certain particles behave differently depending on what kind of magnetic and electric fields they're interacting with. This is why different planets give off their own noises. Going back a few years ago, NASA released the sounds of Saturn, and many people said those noises were eerie. These intense radio emissions were picked up by the Cassini spacecraft, and the scientists studying these recordings have said that they hope it will give them a better understanding of plasma waves in space. Another interesting discovery researchers have made is that of gravitational waves sent out from black holes. Our universe holds a massive amount of galaxies along with an even more countless number of mysteries. Over the years, black holes have caused much speculation in the scientific community, Though these findings have made scientists question the very nature of reality, these incredible discoveries of supermassive black holes have helped us to better understand the true nature of our universe. Recently, astrophysicists have come forward and said that they detected mysterious gravitational waves. It was then put forward that these were created by a black hole when it collided with a neutron star. The theory behind black holes is more than just shrouded in mystery and it wasn't until a man by the recognisable name of Albert Einstein helped humanity to realise that space and time are interwoven, and connected in something we refer to as the fabric of space-time. The mathematical theory of mass then being able to stretch and distort this fabric similar to that of a rock resting on a cloth led to an innovative theory. When scientists picked up on the gravitational waves, they stated it allowed them to study astronomical events occurring in the universe. The researchers said that what they were seeing was the merging of a black hole and a neutron star. At the moment, more study is needed, but if this can be confirmed, it's thought this could help us to confirm that black holes and neutron stars can coexist in a binary system. One of the researchers said the following about the event. It's like listening to someone whisper a word in a busy cave. It can be difficult to make up the word or even be sure if the person whispered at all. What some people may not be aware of is how big these black holes are. For example, there is a black hole that's known as SDSSJ, and this black hole is so massive that it's more than 12 billion times the mass of our sun. Researchers began to wonder how such a large singularity form could exist if our universe is believed to be only 13 billion years old. Today, the black hole continues to be one of the largest, youngest black holes out there in space and it's believed to be even larger in nature if we were able to visit it. However, given the distortion of space and time, 
It would be another 13 billion light years before any information could catch up and show us its true size today. This black hole however is incredibly far away. One light year is around 5.8 trillion miles or 9.5 trillion kilometers. So it's fair to say we won't be able to get anywhere near it anytime soon. Although it's been talked about a lot, one signal that's gained a lot of attention was that of the mysterious whale signal. Before the establishment of the SETI project in 1973, the only radio telescope working to uncover the mystery of extraterrestrial life was that of the Big Ear Radio Observatory that was turned on back in 1963, and had the sole purpose of listening out in the cosmos for extraterrestrial signals. The strange thing was that 14 years after it was first turned on, it received a signal that most members of the alien community deemed the most substantial piece of evidence for extraterrestrial life regarding the SETI project involving radio telescopes. On the 15th of August in 1977, a 72-second long transmission was captured while the Big Ear Telescope was pointed towards the constellation Sagittarius, and many suggested it bore the expected hallmarks of extraterrestrial origin. In fact, prior to this event back in 1959, Researchers put forth the theory that if extraterrestrial contact was ever made, it would likely be that of a radio wave frequency of 1420 MHz, which is the specific frequency naturally emitted by hydrogen, the most common element in the universe and therefore likely familiar to all technologically advanced civilizations. Oddly enough, the 72 second long transmission was exactly within the 1420 MHz frequency with peaks and lows exactly equal to each other in variation marking that not only was this a mathematically symmetrical frequency, but that there was no possible way that this frequency could have a non-artificial origin. This 72 second long transmission was given the title of the WOW signal, which was named after the lead researcher who discovered the signal in the data, and wrote the small note of WOW to indicate the unbelievable nature of the data. Skeptics and researchers to this day have had massive difficulty trying to explain away what this signal could have been from, and so it could very well be that on a lonely planet out in the Sagittarius constellation, we heard the radio signal of a greeting more than 25,000 light years away. As of today, researchers have done a great job at unraveling some recent cosmic discoveries. However, there are still many out there that are waiting to be answered. Not all of these revolve around the search for alien life. For example, in September 2019, a groundbreaking discovery was made by the researchers working at the Imperial College of London and the National Astronomical Observatory of Japan. They have discovered the oldest known galaxy cluster in the universe. The researchers have found a galaxy cluster that is 13 billion light years away from us. This means that if this galaxy cluster is 13 billion years old, and the scientists are currently observing its 13 billion year old physical form. The Yowie, or more commonly referred to as the Australian Bigfoot, is a large beast that stands on two legs roughly 7 to 12 feet tall, and has the general appearance of that of a large ape-like creature. Sightings of this beast have persisted for eons since the time of the Aborigines, and their ancient mythological folklore. What's all the more startling about this urban legend is that even to this day many Australians claim to have encountered the Yowie, and many others have started their own research groups looking into the evidence of these mythological bees. Ancient Aboriginal myths credit the Yowie as being beasts from the time before man, and that the Yowie were the original inhabitants of the Australian continent, but were completely driven out of their native lands by men that came there to settle. Interestingly, this could very well be possible evidence of the Homo sapiens driving out Neanderthals, a species similar to that of humans that were believed to share an ancient common ancestor, but later went extinct roughly 35,000 years ago under mysterious causes. Going down the Yowie rabbit hole leads to further startling theories surrounding their existence. From Australian government officials covering up further evidence, to Yowie's being involved in many of the extraterrestrial and unidentified flying object sightings all around Australia. There are even subgroups of the Yowie community that defend the idea that Yowie might be an alien species visiting the Earth, and that the Bigfoot monsters and variations could all be extraterrestrial species. The Yowie creature is commonly encountered in Queensland, Australia, 
with many of the eyewitnesses saying this creature is unlike anything they've seen before. One woman claimed that she saw one outside of her house, and that when she went out to investigate afterwards a bad odour was left in the air. She didn't manage to take any photographs as the encounter only lasted for a few minutes. However, she describes the creature as looking like a tall humanoid that had a thick layer of hair. Although the Yowie creature is said to just live in Australia, others have suggested the Yowie and Bigfoot creatures are actually the same. In fact, some have put forward the idea that one of the most common places to encounter these creatures is national parks across the planet. Something that many may be aware of is there seems to be an unreasonable amount of disappearances that occur in national parks across the world. An almost disproportionate amount given any errors compared to regarding visiting populations of any kind. Of course, skeptics may argue this makes sense for there to be so many disappearances given the fact that national parks are massive, and two, an untrained individual could potentially be a death sentence if they happen to become lost. However, even specialists have become lost and turn up months later with no idea what happened, or rather worryingly don't turn up at all. One of the things that many people encounter while exploring national parks is mysterious sounds. Many have come forward and said that while hiking it feels as if low and high pitched sounds are following them. Some believe there could be creatures lurking in our national parks that are causing these disappearances. Over the years, experts have come forward and said that they've encountered large humanoid creatures while out in these open areas. Of course, these claims are immediately met with criticism. However, these people stand by what they see. One hunter claimed that while camping in a national park, he heard a strange grunting noise. When pointing a flashlight to where the noises were coming from, he saw a large Bigfoot-like creature, and he said that it was over 8 feet tall. These creatures follow a similar theme. They stand on two legs and are roughly 6 to 12 feet tall. They have the general appearance of that of a large ape-like creature. Sightings of these mysterious creatures have been reported for years. All over the globe there have been reports of them, from Tibet, America and Australia. There's no shortage of these stories, and ancient myths credit these creatures as having run-ins with humans and when this happens it doesn't usually end well. Some have even managed to record some of these mysterious calls, and when given to scientists they say that humans are unable to make these kinds of noises. Scientists and researchers who work in the region have said that what people are seeing is nothing more than unidentified wildlife, but the people that encounter these creatures disagree, saying that they know what they saw and it's unlike anything they've seen before. The most recent case involves a camper who is hiking close to Mammoth Cave in Kentucky. It's been reported that this camper was being investigated for open firing in a national park, and their reason for doing so is because they encountered a large humanoid. Two campers were woke up by a scared man with a gun and a flashlight. One of the campers said the following about the event. We got out and saw a man and his son who told us the campsite had been destroyed by someone or something. We heard them coming back about 10 minutes later. We heard them yelling, I see it. We saw the flash from his gun and he shot maybe 20 yards from the side of our tent. I was mostly just concerned about him shooting in the middle of the night. 911 was called and the couple decided it would be best to stay in the car for the rest of the night. US laws state that no firearms can be used within the confines of a national park. Shortly after, park rangers decided to go out and investigate the area, but they said they found nothing. One individual said the following about the incident. I have encountered something while hiking late at night in a national park. I'm not going to make any outlandish claims, but whatever it was, it stood around 8 feet tall and smelt bad. I've read similar incidents of park rangers going out after people claim they saw a large creature. They always say they found nothing, but it's not like they're going to admit if they did find something. The man ended this by saying there are creatures living in these areas and people need to be careful. However, officials on the other hand have another theory, saying that when people witness these alleged creatures it's always during the night, and during this time it's hard to come to a conclusive answer as to what you're seeing. 
something as simple as a tree can have the appearance of a large man, and most of these cases involve pareidolia or normal national park wildlife. Lieutenant Colonel Percy Fawcett is a well-known explorer of South America. During his travels, however, he encounters some mysterious things along his way. Although some have brushed aside these stories, others have questioned that would someone who had this much experience lie about what they saw. One of his most famous encounters was that of the Maricoxy. It's been reported in the past and believed by many there exists a strange undiscovered tribe known as the Maricoxy. They allegedly live deep within the dense jungles of the Amazon rainforest. The Mary Coxy are unlike any other in that many of the reports claim them not to be entirely human. Back in 1914, Percy Fawcett claimed to have come across a strange tribe that were extremely hairy, lived in villages constructed from primitive materials in the jungle and used bows and arrows to help them hunt and fight back invaders of all kind. They were described as being similar to that of reports of Sasquatch people, only speaking and communicating with each other in primitive grunts, and residing northeast of a well-known tribe known as the Maxibu. Given the fact that many of the uncontacted tribes in the region appear to have origins tens of thousands of years in the past, many claim that perhaps these Maricoxi are a part of the last living tribes of Neanderthals in the modern day. Others believe they could be a hidden village of Sasquatch people, moving whenever they're discovered to denser and more undiscovered regions in the world. Though many might not believe that these creatures exist, there is evidence of its presence in mountains and forests from around the world, and recently we found out the FBI was interested in these sightings. Since 1978, it's reported the FBI started to take interest in this cryptid, during that time, director Peter Byrne of the Bigfoot Information Center sent the FBI an interesting package. Inside contained around 15 hairs attached to a tiny piece of skin. The reason it was sent to the FBI is because the organization couldn't identify what animal this came from. The FBI decided to take a look, and it turned out the hair sample was from a deer. Four decades later, the FBI declassified its Bigfoot file about this analysis. As many have pointed out though, it doesn't prove that Bigfoot exists. It just means the government did someone a favor and may have been a little interested themselves. They never expressed interest in Bigfoot and never stated the humanoid is real. It turns out though, these sightings have been happening for years. An early settler by the name of David Thompson crossed the Rockies near the present site of Jasper, Alberta. He mentions coming across the tracks of a large animal. The entry in his journal reads, Continuing our journey in the afternoon, we came on the tracks of a large animal. The snow around six inches deep in the ice. I measured it. Four large toes of four inches in length to each a short claw. The ball of the foot sunk three inches lower than the toes. The hinder part of the foot did not mark well. The length 14 inches by eight inches. Walking from north to south and having passed around six hours. We were in no humour to follow him. His great size was not that of a bear. In the city of Jefferson, Texas is a haunted hotel that many may not be aware of. This hotel goes by the name of the Jefferson Hotel. And for many years now, people have been reporting odd things while staying here. However, the paranormal is overshadowed by something that only a few have seen. This comes in the form of a mysterious book. The book isn't just given to anyone as you first must know where it's kept. Over the years, people have said the book is kept behind the hotel desk in the main lobby, whereas others have said you must look around the hotel and find it. If you're one of the few that manages to get their hands on this mysterious book, it's said that you're in for a wild ride. For this book isn't just any ordinary book, it details paranormal encounters, early writings and other mysterious things. Another catch to being able to read this book is that you must be a guest of this hotel. Not only that, but you must have been a guest for several years before you're allowed to read this book. The hotel itself is said to have a weird presence, 
and even those not looking for the book have reported encountering mysterious things in and around the building. If you're one of the few that's able to get their hands on the book, it's said that you have to take it back to your room and read it at night. Some have suggested the best time to read this book is just before you go to sleep, as this causes you to have vivid hallucinations all throughout the night. Some have even described it as going on a journey or having an epiphany. With that being said, most of the encounters with the book don't end well. Most readers aren't able to reach the end of the book without something happening that causes them to stop. One of the most common things to experience after reading this book is a lucid dream. A lucid dream is a dream in which the person is not only aware they're dreaming, but can also control the dream. Some have expressed their doubts about whether this is real, but lucid dreaming is backed up by scientific studies. A 2009 study by the Neurological Laboratory in Frankfurt revealed increased brain activity during lucid dreams. Some people who've claimed to master this have said they can make any situation happen. However, there is another side to this. Many who've attempted to lucid dream have said that they've experienced something that's put them off it forever. Some describe it as the man in black while others call it the boogeyman. It seems that if it's not done correct, lucid dreams can give you an incredibly bad nightmare. Some of these have even affected people weeks after the experience. Others who have read the book have said that they've seen dark shadows in their room. Some have suggested these figures could be the mysterious shadow people. The shadow people are described as being black masses. They can often be seen around objects that are said to be haunted or in places where something bad happened. One of the first things people say they feel when they see them is fear, and as if they've drained all of the energy out of the room. Some have reported them as having glowing red eyes while others have suggested they have black eyes. It's not known what they want, but those who have seen them have said they think they're bad. As mentioned, inside the book is said to be accounts of previous hotel members who experienced things they couldn't explain. This ranges from the paranormal to even encountering mysterious creatures they can't explain. A wooded area can be found close to this hotel, and this area was said to have once been inhabited by the Caddo Indians. This tribe would talk about large creatures they shared their land with, and they detailed them as not being friendly towards them. Some have described the book as being some kind of portal, and inside is all of the bad things that happened over the years, and depending on what part you read depends on what you experience. So for example, if you read about the paranormal experiences, you are likely to encounter something paranormal. One woman encountered the following while staying in the hotel, and she said the following. I stayed at the historic Jefferson Hotel, and it was a place that changed my life. While staying in room 12, I saw something I couldn't explain. Me and my husband decided to travel here as it's a hotel we always wanted to stay at. We were here during 2011 and we actually had a great time. It was on the last day that things seemed to change. While trying to fall asleep, I could hear a strange knocking sound coming from the door. What was strange though is that it wasn't coming from outside but sounded like someone was tapping on our door from the inside. This happened for several minutes, so I decided to get up and go take a look. I couldn't initially see anything, so I got back into bed. Then around a minute later, the knocking sound started up again. This time though, the sounds were coming from the end of the bed. As I sat up, I could see a humanoid standing at the end of the bed. I could see a young girl dressed in old looking clothing. As I rubbed my eyes she was still there staring at me. After around 20 seconds she walked across my room and through the door. At this point I thought I was dreaming. I quickly woke my husband up and told him about what had happened. What's crazy about this is while I was telling him this story he interrupted me and said that he was having a dream about seeing a creepy girl in our room. He said he was seeing this from a bird's eye view of the room, and could see the girl at the end of the bed. This was enough for us to wake up and leave the hotel. Several weeks after being back at home, I decided to do some digging on the internet. It turns out the room we stayed in is where a strange book can often be found. 
This book details past travellers who have stayed there and many of them have allegedly encountered the paranormal while staying in that room. Each person wrote in detail about seeing a small girl in their room during the night. This gave me goosebumps as it detailed the same things I experienced. With that being said, there are those that say this book isn't even real, and that it's more of an urban legend to try and get people to stay at the hotel. Whatever the case, the hotel's mysterious presence and book are known throughout the area. So what do you guys make of this? And have you ever experienced anything similar? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Mysterious writings can be found all across the world, and one that still splits many people is that of the Dead Sea Scrolls. Seen as one of the largest and most influential religions of the world, Christianity dates back as far as 2,000 years ago, and derives the majority of its legends and myths from the Judaism religion. These writings, as referenced in the Bible, have often been regarded as incomplete translation or scriptures missing a large amount of information that was discarded eons beforehand. This was in an effort to filter out what the Catholic Church and the ancient kings throughout time wished for humanity to remember. These true scriptures and details were thought by scholars to have been completely destroyed and lost to time, unable to be recovered for the foreseeable future. However, this turned out not to be the case after the discovery of the Dead Sea Scrolls. These ancient scrolls contain first-person accounts of the ancient stories regarded in the Bible from the Book of Enoch, to the complete story of Noah as well as a tremendous amount of information regarding the nature of angels and fallen angels. What was so strange about these stories was not their complete and unedited nature, but rather the detail inside these documents and the stories they told. Many accounts in the Book of Enoch regarded angels similar to that in design as aliens, with some even recounting entering a floating cloud in which they resided for a beam of light that encased around them. Once inside this cloud that was described by Enoch as using smokeless fires, bright lights and lightning, he wrote that he was brought out into the stars, and observed strange phenomena that many experts believe are referring to known anomalies in our galaxy such as a supermassive black hole, our sun itself, and many other cosmological constants recorded in these first-hand accounts. Not only this, but after Enoch travelled with these angels through the stars for a couple of weeks, upon coming back to Earth, he realised that more than 300 years had passed, which accurately maps to the time travelled moving at the speed of light, and time dilation caused by the observations made by Albert Einstein. Known as the theory of special and general relativity, this means it could very well be possible that the Book of Enoch was the very first account of an abduction, written in the ancient times and referenced in scriptures from around the world. As of right now though, many debate this and their true nature is still shrouded in mystery. Our world is always revealing its secrets. For the last few decades, humans have done a great job at uncovering certain mysteries, and so far we've been able to solve quite a few of them. However, there are some that have remained unsolved. Each time we look at these discoveries and artifacts, sometimes we end up with more questions than answers. This world is ever-changing, leaving many mysteries of history lost to time as we attempt to uncover the secrets that we think can be uncovered. Fortunately enough for us, it appears that every now and then a timestamp of history is perfectly preserved for us in the modern day, and is just waiting to be discovered. These timestamps are usually stored away inside the earth, waiting for someone to one day uncover it. However, every so often we make discoveries right on the surface. Jennings Randolph Lake is the location of this mysterious looking rock. It's been given the name of the Waffle Rock due to its strange appearance. Not many people know about this strange looking rock, but when people do first see it, they normally ask if it's real. This is because of the unnatural look of the rock. One thing to note is that the rock is still baffling visitors and researchers to this day. According to scientists and researchers, they've put forward the idea that the rock is old. In fact, they've suggested it could be between 275 and 310 million years old. One of the first things you'll notice is the odd-looking design that covers the rock. 
This interesting design doesn't look like it's naturally made, and some have suggested it looks as though it's been printed on the rock. Theorists have said that if this rock is over 300 million years old, then how would the people of this time have the tools to carve these deep, intricate designs? Another mystery is that there isn't much information out there about this object. Many of the postings online are merely speculation as to what the object is. Of course, there are some more out there theories. UFO believers have put forward the idea this large piece of rock is actually a part of an alien spacecraft, suggesting that it landed on Earth millions of years ago, and one of the reasons we can't find much information about it is because it's not from here. However, researchers don't believe this theory, and have said it's most likely man-made. Even if this is the case, it doesn't bring us any closer to unravelling its mystery. We still have no idea what civilization created this, and how they were able to do it. The discovery of the rock was made in the 1980s, and as mentioned, it was given the name of the Waffle Rock. As of today, the mysterious rock is still baffling researchers. Archaeologists have discovered some incredible structures over the years. Not only are they impressive to look at, but they have also made us question who could have built them. This comes down to the fact that some of these are so massive it's hard to understand how humans could construct them. Some of the more obvious structures include those of the Great Pyramid of Giza and Stonehenge. These are the more famous ones as over the years they've been brought to the public's attention. However, scattered across our planet are giant megaliths that some are not aware of. One of these has become known as the Fortifications of Mycenae. The Fortifications of Mycenae have continued to baffle engineers and architects to this very day. The technique of masonry used is actually referred to as Cyclopean masonry. This is in reference to the written works made by the ancient Greek historians, that describe the walls of Mycenae as being produced by that of giants. It's claimed these walls were said to have been the work of Cyclops, created by using unroute stones, with each being so big that a pair of mules could not move the smallest from its place to the slightest degree. Not only were the massive walls built without using mortar or any materials to keep the large rocks in place, but that each massive block was supposedly placed by hand by the cyclop giants that inhabited the region. Although this may sound like far-fetched stories, you can see why they've been passed down. If you were ever to travel to the fortifications of Mycenae, one of the first things you'd notice is their massive size. In fact, when a human is standing next to them, they're completely dwarfed by their size. This begs the question of how humans would be able to move these giant stones. Archaeologists have come forward and said the ancient site of Mycenae is built on a hill 900 feet above sea level. It's said it was placed here so that it was seen as a power location, looking over everything else that is close by. The civilization at the time decided to build here because it was good for farmland and had easy access to water. It's believed the walls were created 3,500 years ago during the Late Bronze Age period, which seems baffling given the fact that the walls were completely without delay or technological limitation. This is despite the human civilization not having made advancements in metals that could have been used for tools in the construction of the walls, or the placement of the large stones. In fact, the blocks are so massive that even modern day cranes and technology could not place the stones with the accuracy required to build the wall, and maintain the stability of the structure without the use of mortar of any kind. This begs the question then, how did the people at the time move these giant structures? It's been suggested that some of the stones here weigh over 100 tons. Not only this, but the stones are also in awkward shape, meaning it would be near impossible for the people at the time to move them. Another theory that's been put forward is that the civilization that lived here never built these structures, and did in fact stumble across them. This is why they suggested they were built by the Cyclops giants. It appears that due to these seemingly impossible to answer questions, these Cyclopean sites appear to remain a mystery. As of today, archaeologists and scientists are unable to provide an explanation to the sites. Reliable methods of carbon dating have not been attempted and further theory or explanation of the site appears to be non-existent, 
which some say point to the obvious conclusion that researchers are not interested in learning more about the structures. Some have put forward the idea that structures like these prove the existence of giants, further saying that massive structures can be found all over the world. They point to examples like the jars of Laos and the pyramids at Giza. Scientists have said, however, not to look down on past civilizations, saying that they could have had their own way of moving these giant stones and would have used their surroundings to their advantage. The ancient Egyptians is another civilization that's been subjected to many questions. There are some people in the ancient ET community that believe the gods our ancestors wrote about were in fact alien life forms. Although this is a bold theory, they say they have proof. One of the biggest pieces of evidence of this claims comes from the cradle of human civilization that is ancient Egypt. This incredible civilization made incredible breakthroughs in the development of agriculture, science, medicine, mathematics, and the construction of large cities and societies. The first piece of evidence to take a close look at is probably the most notable, and these are of course the Great Pyramids of Giza. These are often reported as one of the greatest wonders of the world, and with this title holds an air of mystery. How were these megalithic structures constructed? For what purpose and to what end? Interestingly, even to this day we really have no idea. Archaeologists and Egyptologists from around the world have devoted their lives to the study of these structures, but still cannot seem to crack exactly how they were built. To this day we've not been able to recreate these structures even on a much smaller scale. Understanding this, how can such a technology to perform this incredible feat of engineering in a short 20 years have existed back then? In fact, some say the sheer size and number of blocks used along with the workforce is more than enough evidence of advanced technologies. The Great Pyramid consists of roughly 2.3 million stone blocks each weighing more than a car ranging from 2.5 to 15 tons apiece. According to supposed receipts discovered in nearby tombs and areas regarding the pyramids, the pharaohs recorded that only 20,000 workers built the pyramids over the course of 20 years. Mathematically, this doesn't make sense. If that turns out to be the case according to these ancient Egyptian records, then that would mean a block was cut from the quarry, moved to the pyramid, pushed up a ramp and placed into its correct alignment within the span of 2 minutes and 30 seconds. A technological impossibility. But of course, given other questionable historical records, the ancient Egyptian civilization have created forged documents and receipts in the past to cover up problems with ownership, timeline, and creation. It could very well be possible that this forgery took place for the creation of the pyramids as well, given the timeline workload and many other staggering pieces of evidence when it comes to theories and techniques of the formation of the pyramid and the fact they just don't seem to add up. As of today, these sites remain a mystery. Antarctica is perhaps one of the most mysterious places on the planet. Researchers and scientists have tried to explore this location, but each expedition takes a toll on the human body. It's an incredibly hard place to study and with it comes many setbacks. New and upcoming evidence appears to have opened the eyes of researchers, as they have been able to take a glimpse into Antarctica's past. Not only this, but modern technology has helped them to discover new anomalies in the region, one of which appeared to scientists in the 1970s. When satellites were mapping our planet, scientists soon noticed they had picked up on something strange in Antarctica. This came in the form of a mysterious hole. Researchers then got together to try and understand what this hole was and why it appeared so suddenly. However, fast forward a few months and this giant hole completely vanished. This was perhaps one of the first mysteries of Antarctica, and scientists were frustrated they couldn't figure out what it was. Fast forward a year as the researchers started to forget about the anomaly, it suddenly made an appearance once again. This time the hole appeared to be much larger. The hole in question was over 3,500 square miles, and had appeared in exactly the same place as it did before. While studying the anomaly once again, they realised it was growing at a very fast rate. In fact, in just a couple of months, the hole grew by a massive 
once again though just as the researchers were taking measurements and trying to understand why it appeared, the giant hole suddenly vanished once again. As you can imagine the scientists couldn't understand why this was happening, and it's only been in recent years that they think they figured it out. Turns out the giant anomaly could be caused by harsh weather conditions. The theory was put forward by scientists at the York University in Abu Dhabi. This was after they looked over satellite images. The reason for these large holes is said to be because of cyclone storms. When the storms hit the region they're able to tear the ice apart. This theory was put forward this year and more research is going into what's causing these holes. The researchers have said that although they think this is what's causing the holes, the cyclones in the region do benefit the local wildlife. The researchers said this study was published in the Journal of Geophysical Research Atmospheres. Over the last few years, scientists have been quite vocal about the fact that Antarctica is melting at a rapid pace. For example, researchers have recently said they've noticed a large fissure growing in the continent's fourth largest ice shelf. This was picked up back in November. This was because the crack grew by over 90 miles. This has led scientists to speculate the Larsen Sea ice shelf is breaking apart. For those unaware, the Larsen ice shelf is a long ice shelf in the northwest part of the Weddell Sea. This can be found on the east side. The ice shelf itself originally covered an area of 85,000 square kilometers, or 33,000 miles. However, in recent years, it's thought to measure around 67,000 square kilometers, or 26,000 square miles. The most recent discovery, though, is in regards to a giant hole discovered under the ice. The scientists have estimated the hole is the size of Manhattan. This giant anomaly was discovered by NASA's Operation Ice Bridge. This is a program of theirs that helps to find and map out glaciers and ice sheets in three dimensions. The scientists have said that this has allowed them to see how fast a glacier melts, and what's actually below the bedrock. The next question people started to ask is what's in the cavern? The researchers said they think it's most likely filled with air much warmer than the surrounding ice, and this is the reason the ice has been melting faster. The biggest news, however, is still the rate at which Antarctica is melting. Researchers and scientists who have been mapping and studying Antarctica have come forward and said that they've noticed some strange warming effects at our poles. This is happening at times they wouldn't expect. For example, like winter and in places like Antarctica. Recent studies have been released and suggest the planet is warming up. The scientists have said this warming in the Arctic and Antarctica have caused many strange events. One being melting of off-winter problems including permafrost that never refroses winter, and also wildlife deaths. The National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration released the following statement. In our recent report we stated this year was the second warmest year on record in the Arctic, and this came with many problems. Record low winter sea ice has been reported in parts of the region, as well as increased toxic algae blooms which are usually a warm water thing on weather changes in the rest of the country. Unfortunately, average American people are also likely to be deeply affected by the decision not to tackle climate change head on. In the last few years, flooding has become a major problem all around the world. One of the places being hit the most are some of the areas of the United States. According to the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, it's projected that high flooding around the American coastlines this year will surpass typical levels of flooding by around 60%. This has scientists worried as it was initially thought it wouldn't be as high as this. Within the next 30 years, it's estimated around 300,000 homes in the country with a combined value of 117 billion are likely to be at risk of chronic flooding. Another interesting discovery was made by scientists and this came in the form of toxic fallout. The researchers said that something bad is happening as the Earth's temperatures rise. What they're talking about is the radioactive fallout from nuclear meltdowns and weapon testing. After the tests were done, that wasn't the end of the tests. Fallout then found its way into the glaciers all around the world. 
Now if these glaciers melt, which it seems likely they will, it could mean that it might get released back into the atmosphere and this could have massive effects. A team of scientists have been working together to try and figure out spots where the fallout could be. So far they've managed to find nuclear fallout in the Arctic, Iceland, the Alps, British Columbia as well as Antarctica. And as you can imagine they started to get worried. It doesn't help either that researchers have said that Antarctica is melting at an alarming rate. Researchers and scientists who have been mapping and studying Antarctica have come forward and said that they've noticed some strange warming effects. They've said they now have proof that the planet is warming up. The scientists have said that this warming is having strange effects on our planet. The National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration released the following statement. In our recent report we stated this year was the second warmest year on record in the Arctic, and this came with many problems. The scientific team went on to say they found man-made radioactive material at all 17 survey sites. The worry is that glaciers and ice caps are melting, and then what happens is it's been released into the atmosphere and then forced back down to Earth, usually in the form of rain. What this means is that it's then absorbed by plants and soil. Not just that, but a large bulk of it also finds its way into the oceans and rivers. This fallout can stay in the environment for a long time. Interestingly, a study was done in Sweden and they found that wild boar meat contained more than 10 times the safe levels of cesium. The worry here is that scientists and researchers have said the melting of glaciers around the world is happening, and it's not something we can stop. They've said that although we can slow the process down, it's still going to happen. They are worried that we won't be ready when this happens, and when it does eventually become a reality, we're going to struggle to find the correct thing to do. Going back a few years ago, scientists reported that a massive object that could change our understanding of history is hidden beneath the Antarctic ice. These claims have caused theorists to speculate about what could be lying under the ice, and as you can imagine, all kinds of theories have been put forward. This mysterious anomaly is believed to be underneath an area called Wilkesland. The area is over 150 miles across, and has a minimum depth of around 2,500 feet. Interestingly, researchers have suggested it could be the remains of a giant asteroid, and if this is the case, it would be more than twice the side of the asteroid that struck Mexico 66 million years ago. This was the asteroid that's believed to have caused the extinction of the dinosaurs. This could help to answer one of the planet's most mysterious events. During the Permian Triassic, a massive extinction event happened. It caused over 96% of the Earth's sea creatures and over 70% of vertebrate organisms living on land to perish. This giant rock could have been behind that event. This mysterious anomaly was first brought to the attention of researchers in 2006. This was when NASA's satellite picked up on gravitational changes. So what do you guys make of these recent discoveries surrounding Antarctica? Be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comment section below and help us by growing this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.